All right, welcome back. So for today, uh, this final session, this final uh, final you know workshop out of our six workshops, uh, we're going to talk about APIs and connecting to the rest of the internet. Okay, um, I'm going to assume that you don't have a lot of pre-existing knowledge about APIs. If you're watching this on YouTube and you find that some of the stuff is, uh, then it means just skip ahead, all right? We'll be covering a few things and I want to just uh, quickly point out that the material that we have inside here, the slides, okay? Um, oh, I should rename this slide. Give me a second. Where's my rename button? Okay. Um, okay. So anyway, uh, I wanted to point out that we're not covering every single thing inside the slides, okay? In fact, even some of the things that we did over the first two days, right? I think we did these. I might have skipped it over. So feel free to take a look at the slides. They are designed so that you should be able to just uh, go ahead and try it out on your own and you might be able to uh, just, you know, go ahead and uh, proceed through it without listening to me ramble for a total of 18 hours, right? 18? Yeah, 18 hours. Okay, but uh, yeah, if you, if you're, those of you who are here at the live session, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me for 18 full hours. Uh, I, I appreciate that to have having an audience uh, to, you know, ask questions and give feedback and things like that. Uh, speaking of which, there is a feedback form that I need your help with at the end of this session. I will paste it into the workshop chat in Discord. Okay, so back to what I was saying, I got distracted. All right, so this is what we covered in the first uh, uh, first four sessions, right? First four three-hour sessions. This is what we're covering today. This I'm not covering today. I don't think I have time, okay? Uh, I'm going to kind of adapt this in favor. I'm going to like replace this with something new, which is the ChatGPT app, all right? Um, this one I'm not covering. It's, got, it's just got some miscellaneous React Native topics, which I don't think are very useful for everybody. So I think it's just something that I will uh, let you read on your own. And these two are what we covered this morning. Okay, so design and prototyping. If you joined us this morning, it was a bit more theoretical, I guess. Uh, there's a bit of hands-on towards the end, but a bit of theory about you know why you need to prototype, what is a prototype, how to prototype, and so on. Um, I haven't managed to upload it to YouTube. I had to go out and rescue my kids who were out not, not rescue lah. Uh, they, they, it was raining, so I needed to go out and drive them, drive them back. So uh, I, I, I'm a little bit hungry. Uh, if my, if, if I, if I get delusional during this session, that's why. Okay, I haven't had lunch. Okay, but anyway, I hope you have had lunch. I hope you're doing all right. Let's get started with this particular lesson, right? So code exp5 API app. What the? All right. Okay, good. Okay, so this is the Google Slides. All right, we'll cover some of this and we'll make a simple app based on a very simple API before moving on to other things, right? So we'll cover the stuff inside here. I also want to cover AWS Amplify, okay, which is a AWS's uh, suite of tools for mobile app development, okay? And I also want to cover ChatGPT, which I find, you know, I, I feel like it's it'll be such a waste if you if we don't cover it because I'm sure some of you have some new ideas based on the potential of this technology. However, this website is not loading, so that's amazing. Let's just stop it and refresh the page. Hang on, enter. Okay, so Uncle, you want to load or not? Uncle. Okay, now my uncle doesn't want to look. Okay, never mind. Uh, let me pull in. I have my slides somewhere else. Uh, let me see if I can pull them in somehow. Da -da 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 -da. Maybe a different browser. Yeah, different browser. I was using Chrome the last few days. Uh, hang on. Uh, let me go. Let me go grab. Ah, I have an Arc browser over here that I can use. Yeah. Okay, great. It's loading in my Arc browser, but not in not in Safari. So. Okay, so you, oh, it's that the load. Okay, sorry, yeah? Right. Close this because it's useless. Okay, uh, all right, let's get started. So I guess first thing I want to talk about for this is, you know, uh, what's going on? What is, uh, you know, what is APIs and stuff like that? Okay, so one of the most common structures of mobile apps is that they're driven, a lot of them are driven by a back. Okay, a backend is necessarily on the internet, right? Not necessarily on the web, I guess, right? You, I call it the web because it to me is an interchangeable term for the internet. Okay, but uh, what I what I actually mean when I say uh, web backend is whoops, right? Where's my mouse? Okay, what I say when I actually what I mean when I say web backend is I mean it's hosted somewhere on the internet. Okay, now we've been focusing on for the first two days. 
we've been focusing on React Native. React Native is technically just front-end technology. All right, it's something that you use to create an interface for users. Users will use your app. You're going to design buttons. You're going to put, you know, uh, menus. You're going to put tab bars and modals and all that good stuff. And the user is going to use it. Okay, so that's nice and everything. But the data, okay, on the app stays on the phone. Okay, if you attended yesterday afternoon session, we showed you how one way that you can persist the data, otherwise it just stays in memory and it gets wiped after your app is released from memory. So for example, if you restart your phone, it's gone. Now, what though? What happens though if you need to communicate with other users, right? So things like, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, any app on your phone that goes online, right? TikTok or whatever, social media apps, especially chat apps for sure, weather apps. Okay, your phone cannot figure out the weather on its own. It needs to go online and get the data somehow. Okay, so all these things, they are driven by some kind of back end that exists somewhere on the internet. Okay, so to build an app with syncing, essentially, right, you need some kind of back end. Okay, so a caveat before we begin the session, right? And I'm, I'm just being fairly practical here about all these things, okay? I will tell you that for a hackathon, right? For a hackathon, you might not have time to build both a front end and a back end. That's just the truth of it, right? Even though, yes, you have a, quite a time this time around for the hackathon, you technically have, you know, five, four or five full days, including a full day, uh, full day thing at the, at the live event, okay? That's if you get past the qualifiers, okay? So, when you are building, right, you might realize that, oh, I need a backend, okay? Sometimes it's okay to just go ahead and use mock data. That means fake data, right? Because you are out of time, okay? And your job here is not to build an entire mapping service, okay? Your job here is to not to build an entire social network, right? You might be wanting to build something interesting, okay? And the interesting part comes on the mobile app, which is the front end, okay? So, if slash when you get to the finals, right, you and your team should think very carefully about whether you actually need a back end. Okay. If you have someone with back end expertise and they can do some interesting things that will enable your app to demo really well, then okay, I think there is a case to be made for creating a back end or using some kind of back end. Okay. But if you're still brand new to all this, and I know some of you are, right? And no shame in that, okay? I've seen some teams that are new and who have done really well in uh, in Code EXP in past years, okay? You need to fight, you pick your fights, right? You need to pick your fights. So if you're going to focus on making a very nice front end, right? Then let's say, you know, you say there's going to be syncing. Sure, just say there's going to be syncing, right? Just say it's not implemented, okay? You can say, you know, we will implement this in a future version or whatever, but it's... Uh, that's part of we're just you know doing a proof of concept here. Nobody is expecting you to come up with a fully fledged product, okay? Fully, fully completed product. Okay, so I want to give this caveat, right? When you're dealing with hackathons, you know, there's a lot of stuff that can be mocked up. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, like those of you who are here for the morning session, right? You know that uh, that little mock-up that I did, right? Some of it might make its way into the final product because if I have no time, then uh, you know what? Just take a screenshot, dump it into React Native, uh, dump it into my React Native folder, and uh, there you go. That's one entire screen, okay? So, uh, so you might not need this session, Okay, but you know, everyone uh, for the live folks who are here, you're here, great, learn something new if you haven't, if you don't already know it, okay? And those of you who are watching the video, well, I've already spelled out what we're doing. First, we are doing a simple API. We're gonna talk about what APIs are and stuff like that first. Then we're gonna work with a simple API to create this uh, bus stop arrival time app, okay? Bus arrival time, very simple API, right? Just go online, grab data and display it on screen. Next, we are after that, we are going to do a chat GPT app. Okay, it's a very simple chat GPT app. I don't have slides for that. Okay, I don't have slides for that. But uh, I think what I'll do is I'll try and find a tutorial that will, you know, tell you what to do. Lah. Okay. Uh, and finally, we will talk about AWS Amplify, which is the uh, Amazon Web Services. They have a series of tools that can be used to kind of create a backend for you. Okay, so uh, and the reason why we're doing AWS is because if you get into the finals, you do have access to some AWS credits. Okay, so uh, the SDA has budgeted for some AWS credits for teams that are interested in using them. However, right, AWS is a fairly extensive, you know, suite of technologies and software. 
Okay, we are not covering everything in there. I'm just choosing Amplify Studio because it's really purpose made for mobile app development, right? So if you're interested in like EC2 hosting, if you're interested in uh, whatever weird names they have, cognition, cognition uh, I have no idea, right? Uh, SageMaker, their machine learning stuff, right? I do not have the, I don't think I have the expertise to help you with all that, to be honest, okay? I don't, I don't know everything, right? Um, your job is to try and figure it out or you can ask your GPT, maybe they can help you. Okay, all right, so let's get going with this particular unit. All right, so web backend. Uh, there's a part here about error checking. If you want, you can go and install the error check. All right, but uh, I'm just going to skip past all this. Okay, so APIs, what's with APIs? Okay, so first things first, all right. Um, the idea here is that, you know, if there are two particular apps that need each other's data, okay, how do they interface with one another? Right, so I, I made this slide many years ago, right, when uh, Facebook just bought Instagram, okay? And in some of you might not know, right, uh, it's, it's been, you know, it's been like this for a while, okay? So Facebook, right, the company that's now Meta, right, bought Instagram, the fledgling at the time of social media service, okay? And what happens is that then you have two code bases and you need them to kind of interoperate. So as the company, as Facebook buys Instagram, right, it could do it one of two ways. One is, hey, Instagram, give us all your source code, right? We will integrate everything. We will just lump it together in one repository and then we will merge everything together. Awesome, right? Not awesome because there are different coding conventions. They might use different technologies. Uh, it's all going to be fairly awful if you try and merge everything together, okay? So what makes more sense would be for them to open up access to one another. All right, so each of these have their own databases. They stored somewhere in a Facebook server, Instagram server. And if they need some data from one another, right, nowadays you create a story, you can cross post to Facebook very easily. Okay, then what they should do is they should essentially call these little functions that they make available to one another, right? And they can then interoperate. Okay, so that's the general idea, right? Rather than just opening up the code base or merging them or doing things like that, okay? the best way to do it would be to just try and make sure that there is some level of access available, okay? So that's how APIs work, right? So your app will frequently need to access data from other services, right? All these things that are available on the web, all right? So why do companies open up their data? Okay, why, why would they even do that? Okay, well, there's a few reasons. The first reason is that it's actually profitable, right? It actually is a profitable thing to open up your data and let people use it, okay? So you might have heard of Foursquare, right? Foursquare.com, okay? Foursquare used to have a consumer app, right? They let people check in to places and things like that. A bit, a little bit like, uh, I think Facebook still does that. And I think Instagram still has this check-in functionality, okay? Now, imagine if you are building a brand new location-based app. Okay, you wouldn't want, and then your location-based app, right? you need to go and find the places around you. You need to tell people, oh, these are the you know clinics around you, okay? These, or maybe these are the businesses around you and these are their ratings. You wouldn't want to spend months and months just gathering all this data, right? You would actually go online, find a source of data and use it, okay? So, where can you find these sources of data? All these API providers. You might also think of like Google Maps, of course, right? Google Maps, of course, comes with a lot of data as well, right? Well, the key thing here is that Google Maps will charge API users for their data, okay? If your app relies on Google Maps to get a bunch of data, you're, you will be charged by Google if you exceed a certain amount of usage, okay? So similarly to, right, similarly to, uh, to Foursquare over here, they also charge developers for usage of their APIs, okay? So that, because there's some business value that they provide to you, right? You don't have to go out there and go around, hey, uncle, your business is uh, what name, uh, and then, uh, you know, how much, what you sell, uh, that kind of thing. What, what are the reviews like, uh, okay? Foursquare has all this, right? And Google Maps does as well. So they're willing to sell these to you for, to them, the price will go towards maintaining their servers, keeping their data up to date, and, uh, charging for access. Lah. Let's say you make a whole bunch of access uh, API requests and what that will let you do is uh, it will give you business value, okay? But for them, they have to charge for, let's say, server costs and things like that, okay? You might have heard of, most recently, uh, Reddit getting into some new, uh, getting into the news for this. 
Reddit uh, API controversy. Okay, so they got into the news uh, recently, right? If the Reddit communities are planning to go offline to revolt, right? And it was all triggered by ARG. <laughs> Speaking of needing to pay for things, all right? So I think Reddit Apollo app. Okay, so let's just, let's just check Reddit Apollo app. Okay, over here, uh, let's go check API. All right, so what happens is that there's this very nice uh, third-party app for Reddit, right? Reddit, hopefully you know, right? Reddit is a forum site, okay? Pretty much a forum site, okay? And there's this very nice app uh, called Apollo, right? I use it, okay? Uh, and it lets people, you know, access the Reddit uh, website without using the Reddit app or without using the Reddit uh, website, okay? Now, what happened though is that Reddit is a, you know, company that needs to make money, Okay, you don't begrudge them that. Okay, they sell weird, they sell gold and they sell weird costumes and stuff. Okay, but they also now want to charge developers to use their API. Okay, why? Well, first of all, because I don't see any ads. So Reddit will lose out on ad revenue. The more people who use third party Reddit apps, the fewer people who see ads on Reddit itself and the less money they can make. Okay, sure, I get that. All right. And what happens is that Reddit is like, hmm, okay, we have an API for people, to, for developers to use to build apps, okay? We're going to charge these developers because these developers are making money off our data, okay? So, sure, they go ahead and they, they say, okay, we're going to charge a fee, right? And then this guy, Christian Selig, uh, he essentially went to talk to Reddit, right? And they said, uh, it's going to cost him about $20 million per year to operate at this current scale. Okay, so which is uh which of course like shocked and which of course like mass hysteria, shock and horror. Okay, for this guy, right? He went online, he went on Reddit to uh to just you know talk about it. It got picked up by a lot of news outlets, and of course, uh, Reddit users are very upset about it. And it's not just the iOS users, this is an iOS app, there are other apps that will be affected as well. Okay, so that's the general idea, right? So APIs, okay? So this is the actual post. If anyone's interested, you can just search for Apollo Reddit API charge or things like that, okay? So uh, so yeah, that's what's going on uh, in the world of APIs, okay? So why my original question, which I got sidetracked by a bit, was why do apps make APIs? Well, because they want to let other people have access to their content somehow, okay? Whether it's to make a profit, Right, like to charge people for it, like Google Maps or Foursquare, or initially, I think I think Reddit was just doing it because they they thought it's a good thing to have, right? They want to build the ecosystem, but now they maybe they realize it's not such a great idea, and now we should at least get some money out of these people. Okay, similarly, Twitter also did the same thing recently, right? Under our you know our interesting interesting new Twitter overlord Elon Musk, right? Initially, there were all these uh Twitter apps, right? Tweetbot, rip. Okay, so um. So what happened was that there used to be all these nice third-party apps for Twitter, right? And one of them, the one of probably one of the most uh, vocal ones was Tweetbot, right? And what happened sometime uh, during the the Elon Musk takeover of Twitter was that suddenly all these third-party apps just stopped working. Okay, no no announcement whatsoever. Like they were all using the Twitter API, right? And suddenly couldn't work anymore because Elon Musk or someone decided that nah, you're just going to make people pay for pay a huge sum of money to access our API. Okay, so that's my uh, little, a bit of a digression, but is to answer why do companies open up their data? Well, they just want people to access their data. Okay, they just want people to access their data. Sometimes uh, for social media apps, especially Reddit, Reddit and Twitter have good reasons for people to want to access it, access their data, even with third-party apps, because some, some of these people will create content. Right, they create content which other people can enjoy. Okay, so all right, I've talked about APIs, right? Why they exist and uh, broadly what they are. Let's get into more detail. Okay, so let's say, right, let's say you are creating an app to show movie reviews. Okay, you could go to Rotten Tomatoes, which is a you know movie review site, and you can go and browse around and say, oh yeah, okay, uh, Into the Spider Verse, ninety six percent. Let's go watch that great movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, and you can see, you can just see all this stuff and browse. But if you're building an app for someone else, you are more interested in the data, right? You don't really need a poster. You certainly don't need a trailer to play when you click on it, right? You just want data like the title and the rating, for example. Okay, so the 
you wouldn't want to load the web page and then grab the data bit by bit, although that can be done, right? That's a process called screen scraping. You can actually scrape data from here because all this is really just HTML and you can actually just try to find, you know, like, okay, like, <coughs> excuse me. I kind of know that this thing, this 96% over here, all right? I can just uh, go and uh, copy the, I can just go and copy the selector for it. And I can just go grab it and create an app out of that. But this is a very fragile way of getting data from the internet. Okay. Uh, people try not to do it unless absolutely necessary because the moment the website changes something, right, it just won't stop. It'll just stop working after that. Okay. So that's not a good idea. Instead, what they should do is they should use the API if available. Right. So this is what the Rotten Tomatoes API used to look like. Okay, again, this is another company that has decided to take their API private, right? And I'll tell you more about you know private APIs and how they even restrict and charge people in a bit. Okay, so over here you see you know this thing down here, it's got things like Total One, Movie, Skyfall, Title, Skyfall. This is JSON, right? Which we've been dealing with in the last few days of React Native classes, right? This is JSON, and the great thing about all JSON is that once you receive it your JavaScript app, any JavaScript-based app, like Node-based app, or React Native, right, will be able to access stuff very easily just using dot notation, okay? So that's great, okay, if it's available. Let's try, let's go back to Reddit as an example. Reddit used to be a shining example of, you know, API friendliness, okay? So let's go to a new website. Let's go to reddit.com slash r slash Apollo, Apollo app. Hopefully that's the right, uh, nope, that's the Apollo uh, app. Okay, so let's go to ah, oh, there it is. Okay, this is the Apollo app, right? So this is this is where all the controversy is, controversy is. So if you're writing a Reddit app, you don't care for all this stuff, right? You don't really care. Maybe you might want the icon, sure, but you don't care for this thing over here, right? You don't need the, the graphic here. You might not need the top one percent and so on and so forth. Okay, so what you do is you can go to the website and just do dot JSON for now, lah. For now, right? Eventually, I think they'll take this away. Okay, if you do that, what happens is that it will send you a you know, whole vomit of data, okay, in JSON format, which lists out everything on that page. E pages and pages of data, right? Not very easy to see and understand, okay? But let's see if we can make that a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to go look, go to my uh, Chrome app web store, JSON formatter Chrome extension, okay? And I'm going to go grab one of these JSON formatters, right? I'm pretty sure all of them work pretty decently, right? I'm going to add this to my browser. And what that does is when it encounters a JSON file, it will help me organize it a little bit better so I can see it better, right? So let's go back to this page over here, refresh with my extension loaded. And let's see whether it does. Ah, there we go. Okay, a lot better, right? So you can see over here, this is not too different from some of the JSON that we've been dealing with. Okay, it's got oops. it's got kind, right, listing, data. Notice it's a little bit different from our JSON in the sense that there's inverted commas around strings. Okay. Um, yeah, technically, uh, our JSON that we deal with in our code should have commas around the keys as well, right? But it's just a shorthand that we don't need to do it. Okay, so you can see over here lots of stuff, right? Lots and lots of stuff, like uh, you know, the width and height, different URLs of icons and stuff like that. All the information that an app needs in order to create a nice Reddit client. Okay, it's all currently available. Who knows how much longer it'll be available. Okay, so I, every time I need to find an example for classes, very difficult one, you know. Well, well, must, every now and then they go and change things underneath, very troublesome. Okay, sorry, uh, I, I stopped complaining. Okay, so how do APIs work? Okay, how do APIs actually work? It's got to do with the way the web works. You make a request and you get a response. Okay, so that's how uh, that's how your browser works. When I go to reddit.com, right, I'm putting in a request. Response comes, it will send me a chunk of HTML, which my browser will interpret and render for me on screen. Okay, it also comes with some response codes. Okay, it also comes with some response codes. And you've, you've probably heard of 404, right? 404 means not found. So if I go to a URL and there's nothing there, then it won't send anything uh, back but an error code. Okay, so a request... When you go to a website, it actually sends your browser, actually goes in and sends all this stuff, boom, right? Uh, what type of what the connection from where, things like that, user agent and stuff, okay? So it's not just sending the browser, you, the URL, okay? So you make a request every day in your browser, right? So uh, sometimes you're just requesting for web pages. Sometimes you're asking the web pages to make requests from their servers. So for example, if I go to google.com, oops, google.com, 
okay? And if I make a search for, I don't know, uh, potatoes, okay? So it will come back with a bunch of information. If I look at the URL, right, it's google.com slash search, right? And ignore everything else. Google.com slash search, okay, is the base URL, right? It's kind of like an API, right? It's kind of like an API. And you are just sending in a query that says potatoes, okay? So you can kind of interpret this. This is the base URL or URI. Some people call it URI, okay? And this is the query. This is like a dictionary, right? Q equals to potatoes, okay? So if you type that in, right, it will load the page for you, okay? All right, so that's kind of how we are making a request every single day. All right, so that's called a like get request. Okay, it's a get request. The data is all encoded in the URL. Right, we will see this later. We'll encode the data into the URL. We'll also make a post request. Okay, this is a very old screenshot, very bit, but you've probably seen something like this before. Right, if you go to a website, right, and you type something stuff in and then you press submit, like, and okay, let's say uh, you try to order something from online, right? You try to order the latest, uh, latest you know, cool thing from online, Vision Pro, right? And then you, then lots of people are trying to order the Vision Pro, right? And you press submit and then nothing happens. You sit there waiting for like 20 seconds, nothing happens. You're going to lose your spot in the queue. So you press refresh, you press submit again, you will get this kind of error, right? You'll say, hey, are you sure, All right? Because uh, all this is a similar error, right? They'll say, hey, we submitted this data for you before already, okay? Are you sure you want to continue? Right? Same for if you're trying to make payment, right? If you try and press submit again after you enter your debit card details, they will say, hey, are you sure you might end up making a double payment? Similarly for this, if you try and refresh one of those pages, you might be like, hey, we're going to send the data again, huh? right? That's because the URL has some data, okay? The URL has some data, but behind the scenes, you can send more data, okay? And that's invisible. That's not in the URL. Why do you want to do that? Well, imagine that you're at a computer, Right, and you want to search for something and you want to make payment, you don't want some random person in your family to some, some random person in your family, you don't want some uh, someone else in your family to come over to your computer and just uh, look at your URL bar and get your credit card information from there. Right, so it's sent behind the scenes, if you will. Okay, now maybe family member can see your credit card information, but who knows? Okay, so there's two types there's the get request and the post request. Okay, and what happens is that you know these are what goes into the HTTP request, right? HTTP is the protocol. You see the word HTTP all the time, it's over here, right? Nowadays, HTTPS, you can treat the word S as secure. HTTP is just a, kind of like a standard protocol for making hypertext transfer, hypertext transfer protocol, okay? All right, so you have to, you can send in headers, right? And that's where you send in some additional information, especially authorization, okay? So the way this works is that, for some websites, right, that are, let's say Reddit, Reddit just now had no authorization. Anyone can go to .json at the end and get the API, you know, the API version of it. But like uh, Foursquare, Google Maps, you actually need to sign up for a developer key, okay? And then you will need to get a special long string, right? Long string that you shouldn't share with anyone. And you send that in together with the header, and they will then be able to authorize you. They'll say, oh, okay, this is, you know, YJ. YJ has an account with us. We will charge his credit card for using this. Similar to ChatGPT, right? So later on, I, I'll either demo it or you can try it on your own, okay? Um, I'm going to generate an API key temporarily for this video because otherwise I'll get charged by if someone else uses it, okay? And um, that API key is secret. I'm going to put it in the video, of course, right? But I'll revoke it after the fact. So for during the video, right, I will use it to make ChatGPT requests and stuff, okay? Uh, and then they'll charge me, you know, like one cent per, per request or whatever. But after the video, I'll revoke it. So if anyone else tries to use it, they will be like, oh, yeah, this, this thing, this key is no longer valid. We won't charge YJ for it. Okay, so we will see that in action later, All right? So these are the HTTP requests. And after you send the request, you get a response. Okay, the response looks like this. There's a bunch of stuff. You might get a message body, and this is a HTML site and uh, different types of information. Okay, and yeah, I think these are your different response codes that you get back, right? Usually if everything went okay, it's a 200 response. fine. So it's just like response codes. Lah. So these are just like short, shorthand for all. Okay, so if it's 301, it's redirecting. You might see this uh, when you browse the web. Okay, 404 is the one that you probably know about. 418 is a weird one. It's a response that says, I'm a teapot. Goodness knows why. Okay, and 500 internal server error, okay, is a crash, right? So 418 is an April Fool's joke that made in the spec. Okay, so JSON, you've seen. 
right? JSON you've seen is your JavaScript objects. And sometimes you get the stuff back in XML. XML reminds us of HTML, okay? So most APIs now return JSON, okay? So it's uh, just something to know. Okay, so this is API results and you can use the JSON view extension. If you use Firefox, it has an automatic JSON formatter, which is kind of nice. Okay, so that's a bit more on what APIs are. So a, lot, a bunch of web APIs available, right? So Twitter, you know, can has an API open, open weather map, right? It's a pretty good one for free data about the weather, right? So you can actually use the API. Okay, see over here, they just tell you, okay, this is your, okay, pause that. So this thing over here is the how to make an API call, where right? you can see openweathermap.org slash data slash 2.5 weather question mark, lat equals to, then you must fill in your latitude, lon equals to your longitude, and API app ID equals to get an API key. Okay, so uh, I believe they have a free tier, right? So essentially, yeah, 1000 API calls per day for free. So you register, okay? Now, the only problem is that some of these will ask for credit card information. Lah. All right, so you register, right? If they don't ask for credit card information, then I guess they'll just stop access, right? Uh, so if they do, then it's a bit more troublesome for you because some of you might not have access to credit cards or debit cards. And you need to be pretty careful about these types of things because it's very easy to rack up huge charges on these things, okay? Let's say your app gets used by millions of users, right? Millions of users, each making, I don't know, 500 API calls a day. Nah, not straightforward, all right? It's, it's going to be... Uh, 0.0012 pounds per API call. It adds up. Okay, so just be aware of these things, right? But this is the how you get call the API. Okay, you just go to this website. You get the data. Your React Native app will be like, oh, here's data, right? Then you format it and put it on screen. Okay, so I'll show you that afterwards. All right, so these are some APIs. Like GitHub has an API. Marvel has an API for some reason. If you ever want to find out like what year, you know, Star Lord first appeared as a character, uh, yes, it's available. There's a comic API. Right, there is a Chuck Norris jokes API. I don't know why. Okay, if you ever need a oh, it's gone. Oh no, that's very sad. Right, I should update my slide. Okay, so yeah, technically, yeah, you've been using an API. React Native is an API. Okay, it's an API into the React Native system. Right, not all APIs are on the web. Okay, so this is also considered an API as well. Okay, so once you have access to this, you can do some interesting things. Right, so this is these are API mashups. So let's say, you know, uh, any of you have kid, primary school kids. I don't see why you would have primary school kids. But uh, if you do, all right, uh, you can go to this website, which is created by the government, schoolpicker.sg, is it? I think it's created by government. Okay. Um, so then you want to find, you know, primary school, uh, set a home location. I'll put my office location, right? And I will see, uh, I want, I really want air rifle for some reason, because that's the first thing on the list. Okay. Now I'll press done. Okay. So now it's going to, use the mash up the API, two APIs. One is the map API and one is the school uh, school information API. Clearly uh, there's no, no match. Okay, no air rifle primary schools near me. Do primary schools have air rifles? That sounds like a terrible idea. So anyway, um, but that's, yeah, you can actually go to the, you can actually go to this website over here, data.gov.sg and you can see how they made it, which is a nice thing about uh, open source. Okay, uh, this archived, right? But still interesting to see how they made it, all right? It's using view, right? We don't we don't cover view. It's another framework. Okay, it's a web app. All right, so pretty nice, pretty nice. Okay, so there are all kinds of silly uh, APIs out there. This is the CatFax API. I think it's still around. Okay, some of these are just like fun projects that people put up. So catfax.ninja. If you go there, uh, apparently you can sign people up for. Oh, okay, I don't think you can do that anymore. Right, so you used to be able to sign people up for cat facts, right? Uh, and then you were like, thank you for signing your cat facts. You now receive cat facts every day. What? Who is this? All right, and then they'll, yeah. Okay, so I don't think I don't think that's around anymore. But you can go to the API, right? And you can go and get their, uh, get their cat facts. Okay, so, oh, there it is. It's still here. Okay, so you can still sign up for cat facts. Okay, I'm not sure about Singapore, right? But the API is over here, right? And you can actually go and read about how to get cat facts. Okay, you can see they usually do it like this. Slash facts means go to my, my base endpoint and add slash facts behind it. Okay, so click on this and you'll say, okay, you want to get facts slash facts slash random. Okay, so let's try it, right? Slash facts slash random. All right, so let's go to here. Uh, I think my endpoint is, where's the endpoint itself? Okay, let's go to this endpoint. Okay, paste this and let's go paste the slash facts slash random. And what that gives us is, right, great, it is a 
it is a Russian cat fact. Okay, sure. All right, let's try again. If I refresh, because this is the way the API works, there's a server on the back end, right? And it will watch out for requests to a given URL. And here you go. Here's one that says, cats are my favorite pets. Oh, all right, refresh. Okay, I think I really like cats. These are not very good cat pets, okay? But I guess it's a fact. I think I really like cats, okay? And what's with the Russian stuff? Amazing, what? Okay, the the... the 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 facts here have uh, the facts here have truly gone down the drain, right? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this because it's hilarious, right? It's a fact about the cat, comma, bro. Very very deep. Okay, so let's go back to here. All right, so that's a cat facts API. This is busrouter.sg. Uh, is by a local developer called Xi'an. Okay, so I, uh, let me show you this. All right, uh, he made use of publicly available data to find bus routes all over Singapore. Right. This guy is uh, this guy loves to make like a uh, fun little web apps. It's a uh, very fun to follow on Twitter, right? So you know he's a uh, he's a local developer. I think he's Malaysian, but he's uh, based in Singapore. Okay, so you can see these are all the different bus stops. All right, and yeah, okay. So you can see that it's got all these buses. You can actually click on the buses to see the routes and stuff like that. All very nice. All based on public data that is publicly available. All right. In fact, we'll be using his uh, API later. Okay, to make something much less impressive. Okay, so where's the data from? LTA law? Right, LTA, right, LTA data model. Okay, but the good thing is that he's made a layer on top of the API for just bus arrival. So we're gonna go take a look at this, right? Arrive la bus.router.sg. Okay. If you go to the website, he didn't bother putting up a, he didn't bother putting up a website for it. He just realized he just says, you know, people who come to this website probably know that it's an API, right? So we just return the API response. Okay. So name is arrive la, right? This is the project URL, you can click on it. And that is the source code, okay? And it says how to use it. Uh. Bus stop parameter is required. Slash ID equals to 83139, okay? So let's try, All right? So I'm just going to copy this thing, All right? Go to the URL and add in slash question mark ID equals to 83139, press enter. What that gives us is a whole bunch of information about the buses that are coming, okay? So you can see over here, Right, there are three different buses, 15, 150, and 155. Okay, each of these comes as an, in an object, right? They're all in an array. So this object has bus number, bus operator. What is gas? Okay, I have no idea. All right, this is the next bus. This is the subsequent bus, and the next two, and the next three. So this, and each of them comes with some information, like the time that is coming, okay, uh, duration, okay, latitude, current latitude, and longitude, in case you want to chart it on a map or something like that. Okay, so very cool, right? Very, very cool. It's all freely available, all right? And we are going to use this to make an app. Okay, so let's get started, right? So before you start, right, if you want to follow along with us, find the ID of your favorite bus stop, right? So where to find the ID of your favorite bus stop? I think he gave us a link to it just now, right? So uh, you can zoom around busrouter.sg, right? You can just go to busrouter.sg and try and find your favorite bus stop. So let's say, let me find the one near my office. Right, I will dox my office. Is that counted as doxing? That's not really. Okay, so my office is at uh, it's uh surprisingly near DSTA. Uh, where 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 Maxwell? No no no. Okay, somewhere around here, Alexandria Hospital. No, a bit to the east. Okay, somewhere around here. All right. So if I scroll in, scroll in, scroll in, opposite Tiong Bahru Park. No, oh there it is Apex and Henderson. Right, you know, uh, say hi if you're ever in the area. Uh, I'm not usually in the office, but okay. Anyway, let's say this one now. Okay, this one. This is the bus that's uh this this bus is here, right? It's in between us and DSTA, which is pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna click on this. I want this 10339. Got a bunch of buses. Okay, 10339. So go and find your favorite bus stop, right? And let's build an app for that. Okay, so I think uh okay, lah, this this session, I don't think I need a break. Let's just try and make our way through this. Okay, so Let's let's get started, All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my uh stuff set up again. So this is my app from yesterday, which I haven't stopped. All right. Let's go make a new uh let's go make a new terminal window. All right, and I'm going to the usual uh, create expo app uh bus app. Okay, I will of course put this on GitHub so you can actually follow along if you want. Okay, so. Let's wait for it to get started. Uh, since we are waiting, I'm going to go over to GitHub and create a repository for this. So press plus, new repository. I'm going to say uh, port exp23 bus app. Okay, so demo app 
for bus stop uh, API for, for EXP 2023. Okay, public, nothing inside, create. Okay. All right, so now uh, I have some command line commands that I can just copy and paste inside here when this is ready. So let's give it some time. Let's pause a bit, I need to drink some water. If you have questions, please let us know, All right? Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna go into bus app and I'm gonna paste the three commands that I got, which will push this starter project onto GitHub. Okay, so there we go. All right, I'm gonna post this into the Discord. There we go, Discord, where's my Discord? There it is. Hang on, my Discord's hanging. All right, here we go, here's our Discord. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is the sample project for bus app. Okay. All right, cool. Let's continue. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to start VS Code and I want to uh, expo, not expo, expo start. Okay. And down here, I am going to open up app.js. There we go. And I'm going to close this. And down here, I'm going to press I to open the iOS simulator, right? Which is my preferred, preferred simulator because the web one doesn't quite work. Okay. So let me just uh, pull this up over here. Okay. Try again. Pull this up over here. And I want my simulator when it shows up to be there as well. Where's my simulator? Wait, wrong, 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 wrong app. Dark. Was quit. Okay, I started the simulator. Let's give it some time. All right, there we go. Here's my simulator. And I will want to make it into the split screen with my other app over here. Yeah. Okay, my computer is a bit laggy, but I think it's okay, great. Okay, so at this at some point this thing will, will get set up, right? But uh, I'm I'm good to go. Okay, so if you want to follow along, the slides are available, right? And the first few steps are really just to get started with things. Okay. So uh, I've already forgotten my, my bus stop number. 10339, okay, good. All right, so this is the what it's gonna look like, okay? And the uh, first task is quite simple. How huh? we're just gonna add text elements and a button and style, right? So for this one, I'm not going to, I'm not actually going to uh, stop for this, right? Uh, I'm just going to, you know, charge a hit and get this done, okay? So let's head back over to my, let's head back over to my code. Go back to code. Okay, so down here, right, this thing, I need this to decide, I need this thing to launch Expo. Uh, continue, I need this thing to launch Expo. Expo is here and Expo needs to open up my preview so I can see what I'm making, okay? So while, while I was doing that, let me just uh, get started. I'm just gonna say this thing, this thing is a bus arrival time, okay, text. Uh, bus arrival, okay, this, let's just put the, uh, Let's just put a uh, time goes here. Okay, if you really want the angle bracket, you can put a slash in front of it. Is it? I'm trying to remember how you do it. Okay, uh, never mind. All right, down here, I also want a button, right? So buttons, by the way, uh, I think based on what I've read, if I'm not wrong, I think uh, many people are recommending we use pressable nowadays rather than touchable opacity. It's got slightly better functionality. I don't think it affects us very much, but for the app, for the purpose of this course, let me just try it out, right? So pressable, right? press pressable, and uh, on press equals to some function, which I will define later. And inside here, I will need a text that says, uh, you know, uh, refresh. Okay, simple interface, right? Let's, uh, let's see, enter you on. Okay, I think, I think it's the same URL as before, right? So I just click on that. Okay, because it the expo generates a local URL for whenever you run it. Okay, so I think it's just a default URL. I'm going to see what's available once it loads. Okay, uh, at the same time, let me go set up some styles. I guess ah, there you go. Right, style equals to styles dot uh, arrival time text, and this one is style equals to styles dot. Wait, no, that's the actual that's the arrival time text. This is the description text. And down here, this pressable, let's give it some style as well, right? Style is equals to 
styles dot button button i guess and this one style equals to styles dot button text okay simple stuff all right if i save nothing happens but that's because the style so description text i'm going to give it some padding uh, of 10 and down here the uh, arrival time text i need to make it bigger right so i'm going to font weight old and font size of let's say 24 and down here the button let's give it a bit of styling i'm just going to make it a background color uh purple is it no green right since our bus buses are green and i'm going to give it some padding of 10 as well okay so there we go we need some margin around this as well so margin of 20 now let's go 24 right so this thing let's do margin 24 rather than adding 10. margin of course is uh, distance from other things padding is distance from yourself to your border okay so okay i think that's all right uh maybe change the refresh to white color right so uh button text color white Okay, all right, that's my that's enough. That's enough of my styling. Okay, so that's step one. All right, now what I want to do is I want to actually uh, set up a state variable, right? A state variable that uh, is going to determine whether it's okay. When you deal with asynchronous data, data that is obtained from online, you want to have to uh, tell the user that the UI is going to be not responsive for a while. It's very frustrating when you tap on a button and you're like, hmm, did anything happen? Okay, then after that, it loads. That's not great. Okay, so you want to tell the user, tap on it, it's like, oh, wait, spinner, right? People are like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll wait, I'll wait, all right? And of course, if the spinner goes on too long, then something is wrong, all right? But uh, let's let's give a let's give a spinner, essentially, okay? So I'm going to uh, import, oof, right? I'm going to go and import uh, use, use state from React, okay? And down here, I'm going to create a const, loading set loading equals to use state and i'm going to set it to be true right so by default it's a loading so down here instead of time goes here i'm just going to put um i'm just going to put a ternary operator that says actually no need ternary operator yeah ternary operator so i need the curly brace all right and then i'll say loading if it's loading i'll say loading dot dot, dot. otherwise i'll say uh loaded Okay, so now it's just a uh, loading until this thing gets set to false, then it will be uh it'll be loaded. Okay, some people might say loading or it might some of you might reverse this and say loaded as a set loaded. Okay, but hopefully this makes sense to you. Okay. I'm going to actually you know what I don't want loading. I'm going to use an uh, activity indicator. Right. There's a there's actually a nice little uh, thing called activity indicator. So I, over here, I'm just going to down here, all right. I'm going to put in a activity indicator and let's say size equals to large okay notice when i use autocomplete i press tab right it will actually auto it will give me it will import it for me okay so just be aware i'm not manually importing stuff because i am pressing tab to autocomplete and it imports from the right library for me okay so great it's got a nice loading indicator right very pleasant looking and in fact it looks different on android android will get its own native loading indicator Okay, so now let's go grab data a bus stop. Okay, let's go grab data from the bus stop. So first things first, we need to set the URL somewhere, right? So we're going to put it up here. Let's do const bus stop URL. I like to make my constants uh, capital letters just to tell me, okay? And the uh, URL uh, link is arrivela2.busrouter.sg slash question mark ID equals to, I forgot the ID again. Let's go check. 10339, right? One zero three three nine. Okay, so this is the bus stop URL, right? Next time, if you want, uh, if you want something to be more flexible, you want to give the user a text box where they fill in the bus stop that they want, then maybe you take away this thing, right, and you smoosh together the string that you want to actually use. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to, we are going to go ahead and grab the data from here. We're going to use this thing called fetch. Okay, we're going to use this thing called fetch, and uh, we're just going to, we're going to wait for the response. Okay. This is one thing that might be a bit confusing for folks because there's many ways to do this, right? You're going to hear of different ways to do this. I'll show you one method first. Okay. So down here, I'm going to say function load bus, you know, what? Never mind. No need a function. Let's put it inside use effect. Okay. So 
Remember use effect? Those of you who attended yesterday, right? Use effect is a way to do stuff, right? Load stuff uh, when something happens, okay? Either when your, when your screen shows up or when something changes, okay? So I'm going to say use effect, right? And I want something to, I want to load some information the moment it starts. So I use this like super bracket soupy thing, okay? This super bracket soup like, uh, line of code that says here is a function okay that runs at the start okay it's super weird but you get used to it okay but down here this thing will run load bus stop beta okay so this line this thing will run load bus stop beta but there is actually no load bus stop beta function so let's go write that now function load bus stop beta open bracket close bracket okay so the way this works is you run fetch fetch bus stop URL, okay? Then, given the response, you want it to return the JSON version of it, okay? So it receives a response, and then you, as the client, must kind of convert it to a JSON thing. And it looks like JSON, but it's string. It's a string first, okay? But, you know, JavaScript has a way of taking this string and converting a JSON, right? So what you do is you convert it to JSON, right? Then, with the data, right? With the data, you will actually console.log it response data. Okay, so did I have any errors? Yes, I forgot to put a bracket over here. Did I forget to put a bracket over here? Let me see. Let me see which brackets I forgot. Huh? Uh, this then I did. Ah, okay, this then I did. Not. Ah, okay, I know. This way. Okay, great. Okay, so I missed out a bracket. Okay, but hopefully this, uh, this thing over here is not too confusing right now, all right? It's just kind of like doing things in sequence. How come you need to do like this? How come you just can't say fetch, uh, you know, response.json equals to response equals to bus stop, fetch bus stop URL, right? Why not? Why can't you just do this, right? Why cannot like this? Right, Can, why can't you just do uh, const response equals to fetch bus stop URL, okay? Then after that, uh, response const response data equals to response.json and then finally console.log response data. Why cannot like this? Okay, anyone? Anyone has any ideas why you can't do this? Let me know in the let me know in the Zoom chat or you can uh, yeah Zoom chat. I'm not monitoring the Discord chat right now. Anyone has any idea? Why can't I just do this? How can I must go through this like super nonsensical uh, thing here where I must wow. Fetch then 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 right. This is like one of those like annoying annoying uh sitcoms in in on Singapore TV like then and then and then, okay. Anyone any ideas? I'm just gonna take a chance to drink water. <laughs> okay. Yes, thanks, Treyas. Right, because fetch returns a promise, right? So your 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 response, haha, we get it. Your response, your your answer is more advanced than what I'm looking for, right? So yes, uh, you're absolutely right. Okay. Uh, so Shreya says it fetch returns a promise, and it might not be returned in time before a second line of code is executed. Okay. But uh, his his is the advanced version of the answer I'm looking for. Uh, what I actually was looking for was something simple. Is actually I'm just saying that this thing is asynchronous. Okay, it takes time, which is what he said like, in the in the second sentence. Thanks so much, by the way. All right, so this takes time, right? This takes time. It will take some time before you can run the next line of code. You know how fast code runs? Damn fast. Okay, so if you run your if you write your code like this, okay, if you write your code like this, it's just going to like, run this and then immediately run this bit and then uh, immediately run this. However, this thing is not is still out there fetching data. Okay, it's still out there fetching data. So. This will be now. This will be now. This will be now. All right, your your app will crash. Okay, so this is the asynchronous code problem. All right, you need to go online, fetch some data, and going online and fetching data takes time. Right, it may be quite fast lah, To be honest, right, we go to a website, we press enter, wow, data comes back. Okay, but it's not as fast as the execution of code. Right, this line to this line will run very very fast. Okay, it will not be on time. So instead, you have to wait. Okay, you have to somehow force your function to wait. 
So the way I'm showing you how to wait, right, is by using this fetch and then, right, which yes, involves the idea of promises. I don't want to dive into what promises are and stuff like that, okay? But essentially it just says, okay, fetch already, uh, please wait for the response to come back and then run this function, okay? This function has a response and then do this convert to JSON. Converting to JSON also takes time, okay? It's like a file system thing, right? It just takes a bit of time because you might get a lot of JSON, okay? When it's done, right, then we console.log it. Right. By the way, I haven't actually looked at this uh, the code running. So let's go take a look. Right. So let's go take a look at our code and see what it gives us. There we go. Right. This is the data that we've retrieved. Okay. It's got next object, next two object, next three object, number one, four, five, object, 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 object. Okay. So not bad. Not bad. We managed to get some data back. Okay. Uh, at this point, I guess I should mention that you know there are multiple syntaxes for dealing with uh with dealing with promises and asynchronous code in javascript okay so that is one way i would call that the most uh, basic way okay this one is the most basic way and uh yeah there's more than that okay asynchronous then calls are called promises okay um so i guess if you were to try and you know like uh do this in real life like let's say you want to you know like order pizza with your friends if you try to do this in real life you would say true stopping all right and then uh, function, then this, then that, okay? So yeah, can lah, can, okay? There's actually a even more, that's not, okay, so I said promises are not quite the most basic way of doing things. This is another way, right? You can say two stoppings, right? And then you pass it a function. Remember set timeout, okay? Set timeout had the 5,000 afterwards, right? And then you run the function later, right? So now this one, you can say two stoppings and then you run this function. Uh, after you choose toppings, you run, you place this order. Then after that, and then after that, you have a whole bunch of it's like a whole bunch of nested functions. Okay, not ideal. All right, so there is this. Uh, so okay, this looks a bit better, I suppose. Right, uh, choose toppings, then this, then this, then this, then this. All right, but there is a even syntax. Is it newer? I think it's it's considered newer. Right, more. Right, so instead of this, right, uh, instead of this, you will do it like this. Okay, you declare your function as async. Okay, and you can uh, and you can actually uh, hang on, uh, sorry, I just received the message. Okay, okay, All right. I'll I'll get to that in a moment. All right. Um, you declare your function as asynchronous. Right. Then you just call them as per normal. All right. So that's the general idea. Okay. So uh, the question here is, uh, oh, well, will Puppeteer resolve the asynchronous problem? Okay, so Puppeteer is, I believe, crawling, right? It's for crawling. I haven't used it. Uh, I haven't actually used it, but I've heard of it, okay? Um, if I'm not wrong, everything inside there is asynchronous already, okay? Uh, they might have designed it such that it's uh, it's already it's already designed to be asynchronous, okay? I, I have to... I have uh, so I have a question here. Will Puppeteer resolve the asynchronous problem? Right. I have to caveat that I am not familiar with Puppeteer. I haven't used it before. I kind of know what it is. Right. I know it's a, uh, it's essentially it's essentially crawling. Right. If I remember correctly, okay. uh, just going online and grabbing stuff. Okay. So, yeah, I believe it should be asynchronous by default. Okay. So, hmm. all right. So I I can't give you a good answer. Right. If you're interested in finding out more, maybe you can post in the. Uh, code questions inside uh, the Discord, and we can help look it up. And I can I can ask someone, right? We have some I have some colleagues who can help out as well. Okay, great question though. All right, so I guess what we're gonna do is right. We're going to convert this to a let's try and convert this to an async function just to show you what it looks like. Okay, so down here, right? If this is async, right? Then I need to do this async async function. Okay, and over here I can I can actually do this. Right, I can actually do this. I can say const response equals to await fetch. That means you actually wait for the result. Await response, right? Then I don't need to do this anymore. Oops, sorry. Uh, this is the promises method. Okay, so this one can be done if it's async. If I save it though, it's gonna complain. Is it complain? Okay, did I complain? Right. Uh, at some point, okay, it didn't complain. All right, so at some point it did, let me just check to make sure it's not complaining. Console.log, console.log async version, All right? Save this, okay, let's go back. And yeah, there you go, All right, it worked, okay? Uh, there was a point when your use effect couldn't uh, run an async function, right? So we had to wrap the whole thing inside another function, which is a bit silly, okay? But uh, this is fine, right? I think this is the most readable version of the code, I suppose, All right? 
You just say const response equals to wait for this. Okay, then you don't run the next line yet uh, until you get something back. Okay. All right. So that's the that's where we were at. Okay, so let's continue. Right. We are going to finish up our little app. And the next step over here is we are going to go and find the data containing our bus. Okay. So let's say, uh, let's say I'm only interested in one particular bus. Okay, so where's my bus? In next, okay, let's say I'm interested in bus number 175. Okay, let's say I'm interested in bus number 175. All right, so what I want to do is I only want to filter out the data such that it's bus number 175. I am going to ignore everything else. Okay, so let's use the filter function. Okay, so let's go, let's go try out, try that out. All right, so over here with the response data, right? Maybe I don't need to console the log anymore since I have it. Okay. And what I can do is I can say uh const my bus equals to response data dot. Okay, how do I get to it? Let's go check. Everything's inside a services array. This one might be a bit hard to read, lah, right? So in which case you just open up your browser and go to bus router to okay, arrive la dot bus router to okay. R, uh, and then what was my number again? I always forget, 10339, 10339. Okay, so I just look, I look at this, right, to try and navigate. So I know that everything is inside services, so I have to say dot services. Okay, that's how I get to this, this array. Okay, and this array, I want only the element where number is 175. Okay, so here is where I'm going to do a filter. All right. So a filter, the way it works is that it takes in an item and you essentially say, okay, filter for a certain condition. In this case, I want item.number equals, 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 letter to use triple equals to 155. Okay. Once I do that, I just want, excuse me, sorry, I have the autocomplete is getting in the way. I just want the first item in the array. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if it doesn't, it's because I have kind of glossed over what is filter. Okay, so filter is a higher order function, right? It works on collections. So this is a collection, is an array, okay? And what it does is it goes through every single item in the array, right? So that, remember, there are how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six items in the array, okay? Each of which has six items inside, a bit confusing. And it just filters for a certain condition, okay? It filters for a certain condition. Uh, do I want 155? No, I want 175. Okay, sorry. 175. Okay, so that's the function that it receives. It receives a function that this that kind of determines how what which ones will remain after the filtering process. Okay, so the function, as long as uh, sorry, as long as the condition here returns true, it will keep that item and it will give you a brand new array with just that item in it. Okay, so now I have a brand new array with just the item in it, and I know there's only one of it, so I just get the first item from the array. Okay, so let's console.log my bus just to see whether that works. Okay, so over here, let's go back to my item. And here, there it is, right? This is my bus. Okay, it's got a uh, next and a whole bunch of, I got 175. I only, I only got it back. Okay, I realized at this point that I have not pushed anything to GitHub. So you know what? Sorry, let me go and do that right now. Right, git add dot git commit dash m long overdue. First push. Uh, we are almost done. Sorry, hit push. Hey, hey, sorry. Okay, so hopefully this uh, filter thing makes sense, right? This filter thing can take a bit of getting used to, especially since if you put it on one line, as Prettier has decided it would, it's just like what gibberish, right? Filter item arrow item number equals equals one five square bracket zero. Okay, hopefully I this makes sense when I when it's broken down. Okay. All right, let's go grab the arrival time. Okay, because my bus, okay, my bus is a JSON object with the arrival time somewhere inside there. Okay, where is it? My bus is here. I want the next bus. Okay, so dot next. And dot next is an object. So I just need to dot into it to figure out the next arrival time, which is there. Dot next dot time. Okay, so let's try my bus dot next dot time. Save this. Okay, and let's take a look. There we go. That's when the next bus arrives. Okay, it's real time, so it arrives in about nine minutes, right? Let's see if we can end the lesson before that. No, I mean end this part of the lesson before that. Okay, because I've been talking for a while. Okay, so how do I display it on screen? I need a state variable. Okay, so let's go up here. 
const, uh, let's say const, what should we call it? Uh, arrival time, perhaps, sorry, const arrival time, set arrival time equals to use state followed by the empty string. Okay, and then down here, okay, down here we are going to display, if it's loaded, I don't display the word loaded, that's silly, I want to display the arrival time. Okay, so far so good. Now, the only thing is, how do I, and I need to assign arrival time to it. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, down here, remember you can't just say arrival time equals something because it's a state variable, and you say set arrival time bracket, followed by my bus dot next dot time. Okay, since it's a string, I don't need to do anything else. All right, and if I just do this, nothing happens because it's just going to be loading forever. I need to set loading to be false. All right, that means I'm done loading. There we go. Okay, so that's my next bus arrival time. It's not very formatted very nicely, but it kind of works. Okay, so it's actually only a few lines of code, right? Get the data, wait for it. Get the JSON, wait for that to be ready. Filter out the item that we want. Okay, a bit of data munging, if you will, just grabbing the data, just kind of like navigating the data. Okay, and you set the arrival time to the data that you want, and you say, I'm done loading. Okay, I'm done loading. All right, and not bad. Okay, not bad. But what if your user, okay, you know what? Let's, let's push to GitHub first. Git add dot git commit dash m uh, display the arrival time. Okay, all right, so that's good. So how about this? What if your user is, uh, you know, has been staring at the screen for a while? Okay, what if you want them to let them refresh? Okay, so you press refresh, it should update. How should you do that? Well, refresh should actually run the load bus stop data function. All right, so let's do that. So this refresh button, it doesn't do anything right now. We should load bus stop data, open bracket, close bracket, semicolon. And after that, we should set loading or at the same time, we should set loading to be true. Okay, so let's try. If I press refresh, okay. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's just happening so fast that nothing you can't really see the can't really see the loading indicator pop up. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's fine. All right. So you know what? Uh, I can I can simulate it a bit. I can just uh, set out uh load bus stop data comma let's say five hundred milliseconds. Okay, and let's pretend that you know it takes a while to load. Right, and then it shows up. Okay. That's a pretty stupid way to uh, kind of uh, demonstrate a point, but maybe it makes the user happy. And you know, that, that's actually quite a, that could be a good idea, right? Because the user could be like, oh yeah, how come I spam this thing? Nothing happens, huh? right? So if you just put a half a second, wait over there, and then they're like, oh yeah, okay, it's loading, right? It's doing, it's doing work. Mm, respect, respect. Okay, so that's nice. Okay, there's more, there's more. How about auto updating, right? Maybe you don't want to, you don't want, this is so primitive, right? You have to auto, auto, up, you have to press manually refresh it every single time. How about auto updating? And, okay. Uh, first of all, I think, uh, let's see, uh, to auto update, okay? Auto update is essentially a way of uh, just running some function in the background, okay? So the best way to do that is to use use effect, okay? Use effect. So down here, all right, use effect should not just uh, load bus stop data, it should also set an interval to load bus stop data every how many seconds? Two seconds. Okay. And that's good, right? Because now it will refresh auto update by itself. Okay, I, again, I can't prove that it works unless I put another set timeout inside, inside here, okay? But this thing over here, you're just saying, hey, when the screen loads, load it one time, and then after that, please go and uh, load it every two seconds afterwards. There is a problem here. It's that you have set this thing to load forever. You should probably clean it up, right? So those of you who attended yesterday afternoon session, we talked about use effect. If you're going to clean things up, you can also run functions after the screen exits. And the way you do that is you return the function to be called when the screen exits. The function to be called is just clear interval on the interval. Okay, so this is just good hygiene, right? This is just, hey, when you're done, uh, you know, switch off the lights, you know, close the doors on the way out. Okay, 
So that's the general idea. You are using use effect for unmounting. Okay, so that's that's it. Right. So of course, yeah, the, the string here doesn't look very good, uh -huh, but you know, bear with me. I think it's fine. All right, so I'm going to uh push this. I'm going to push this. If anyone has any questions, please let us know. Okay. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll take a bit of a break. I need a break. I have talked for very long. Okay. And we will resume in about, let's say, 10 minutes time. Ken? All right. So 10 minutes time, we will resume and I'll go through some of the remaining stuff that I wanted to talk about. Okay. So see you in a bit. Okay, just in the interest of uh, just just for interest sake, I'm going to unfull screen these two, right? Just so that we can see the we can see the number possibly change later on, right? So let's see, yeah. Uh. Right. So hopefully this number changes and my code is actually working because I haven't tested it. Okay. All right. See you in a bit.
sorry, I couldn't find I couldn't find my mouse pointer. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm back. Hey everyone. Uh, good news. Good news. The good news is that the the app works. It refreshes itself. Uh, as you can see over here. Uh, the next bus is at three o four. Okay, just now I recall was at two forty nine. So it's working. All right, we are we have managed to make a bus stop app. Nice. Okay, lah. Right. Let's uh let's move on to some other API related stuff. Okay, so this is this is really scratching the surface. Okay, I gotta say this is really scratching the surface of APIs and making use of uh online data and stuff like that. Okay, but I want to re-emphasize that you know you might not need real back-end data. Okay, you can mock it up. There are services out there, I forgot which, right? That can give you a fake API that you can call. And then in the fake API, you just like, you know, uh, you just give a JSON file to it, right? And then it will spit it out back at you. Okay, like it's called, I mean, you can just, you can do that as a web server of some kind. Okay, but uh, if none of that makes sense, don't stress, right? Don't stress, do whatever you can, right? Do the best, I believe in you, good. Okay, all right, Um, let's, let's move on. Okay, so I think uh, this is probably a good point to try out the ChatGPT. Okay, I think it's a good time to try out ChatGPT. So, and uh, this is new material. So like I mentioned just now, we don't actually have slides, but I have found a pretty decent tutorial and I'm just going to follow it. <laughs> Sorry, folks. All right, I'm just going to follow this tutorial and I will, uh, yeah, I, let's uh, let's try it out. Okay, uh, the great thing uses the gifted chat uh gifted chat uh, API, right, library, okay? And uh, that's and that's great because that is the exact same library that we use in one of our, in one of our modules. Okay, so where is my, there it is. Where are my slides? Okay, the, okay, anyway, the online database app, okay, if you, if you feel like opening it, uh, it uses this thing called gifted chat, right, to create a simulated chat app. Okay, and the uh, this tutorial that I just found, uh, it uses that too. Awesome. Okay, so let's try it out. All right, so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it into the Discord, and you can take a look at there if you want, right? Rather than following me, uh, but you know, if you want, just hang out for a while. Uh, we do have one final quiz for you to win one, uh, as yet unspecified little prize. Okay, so yeah, uh, this might be interesting to some of you. Let's try it out. Okay, so. Let's go uh, over here. What I need to do is, first of all, I need to stop this server and I'm going to make a new project. Okay, so uh, I should have thought of this bit, but I, I, I just realized I've been putting all my stuff in my main developer folder, which is terrible. Well, it's okay. Um, let's let's go to code exp and uh, do this one, right? So that I don't make this stupid mistake again. Okay, so um, what I want to do, I wanted to npx create expo app uh chat gpt app okay so let's try this out it's a very simple tutorial if you scroll through it you notice that there's really not that much to it okay um and i think it's good this tutorial is good because it actually has another of calling uh of doing requests online so i think that's a uh, good to learn is using axios right which is a fairly popular http client um, People just like the syntax a bit better. Uh, it also existed in the days when you know your alternative was using then 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 or using the nested callback functions, right? So it's uh, I think with async await you might not need Axios, but let's try it out. Okay, no harm. Okay, let's go to my uh, let's go to GitHub and create this create this thing. Okay, GitHub.com. All right, so press plus new repo. And code exp23, uh, chat GPT app. Okay, demo chat GPT app for code exp2023. Right. Press create. Okay, great. Let me go copy the once and let's go to item just in time. Let's go to chat GPT app and paste it in. And this is going to be the URL I'm sending over to Discord. Okay, so. Sample project for ChatGPT. Okay, nice. All right, let's let's go. Right, I cannot guarantee that this will work. Stuff might go wrong. Uh, who knows? Okay, I am I'm very hungry. I guess is the is the main problem. Okay, sure. So we also need to install some other stuff inside here, right? Uh, I need to open up Visual Studio Code on this thing. Okay, uh, I can close the bus app. And I can open this app over here. 
right? And uh, once again, let's launch it using the simulator, right? So I'm just going to resize these. Let's not bother full screening this time. Uh, down here, I need to uh, npx expo start. So I can just npm start if I'm not wrong. And there we go, right? So I just need to go over here and refresh. Not, not refresh, sorry. Actually, command D, right? So command D will reload this thing. Okay, good. Let's open up our app.js. Okay, uh, before that, actually, I think we, I should probably fix that thing. I think we need to install the gifted chat, which is a React Native library. So npm install React Native gifted chat. Okay, I don't know why it's called gifted chat, right? GEP. Yeah. All right, anyway. Um, so let's uh, let it run for a bit. And okay, good. All right, that was fast. Uh, I think we should probably install Axios as well, but maybe later. Okay, so let's uh, let's close this and let's let's try it out. All right, so I'm going to import gifted chat from React Native gifted chat. Okay, that's good. And I'm going to need use state from uh, from uh, React. Okay, great. So now inside here, right? So first things first, I'm going to need an array to store all the messages. Okay, equals to use state. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, now let's let's not just dive into it straight. Let's look, take a look at documentation. Okay, so let's go to GitHub or Gifted Chat React Native. And what that does is what it, what you have here, okay, is by you know guy who maintains it still uh, still fairly active, which is good. All right, and what it does is it gives you a nice little UI, right? And it will have a right side, left side. Okay, and you can let people tap in and it's all styled and it's got all this extra stuff like you know you can send pictures and things like that so it's the front end of a back end app okay so pretty nice right and you can actually go down and see how to use it right they'll tell you oh you can set the not this here's the example right we just added this okay and we're going to say you know use effect uh set messages and stuff like that okay so let's try right let's try so let's go to the let's go from here all right, so what I want to do is, where's my, where's my simulator? Okay, uh, my simulator seems to be stuck. Let me just refresh it real quick. Excuse me, command D, command D, command D. Okay, my simulator was a bit stuck. Uh, let's see if I can get it working. That's kind of annoying. Let's quit it and reopen it. Okay, anyway, let's uh let's just continue with this, right? So over here, I don't need this view. I do need a gifted chat uh component. Okay. Uh gifted chat component takes in a few things. It takes messages equals to the messages array, right? And it needs an on send uh, function. Okay, so on send equals to a function that takes in a uh, new messages where you need to trigger on send on it. This one, this is just a tutorial, huh? But and I'm gonna say user, give your user an ID. Okay, because uh if you're trying to build an app, right, each user needs a separate ID. Okay, so sorry, ID colon one. This is not a this is a JSON object. Okay, so let's open this up. Open this up, open this up. Okay, and I think it's gonna complain that I don't have the on send. So let's do function on send bracket uh new messages, open curly brace. Set messages, open bracket, gifted chat dot append messages to new messages. Okay, so all this you can get from reading the library, right? So you can see down here if I do this, if I there's a little type of message here, okay. Um, it's not ideal, right? It's not in the safe area. I guess this is as good a time as any to just uh show you how to do the safe area stuff. Okay, so let's open up my browser and how to do a uh, uh, expo safe area. Okay, so there's a safe area view, right? If you want to use a safe area view, I is it expo? No, it's React Native, right? So safe area view is from React Native. Uh, let's try this, right? So safe area view, import that from safe area context and wrap it around this thing. Okay, so I think there's a keyboard shortcut for this. I forgot what it is to wrap stuff. Uh, Oops, sorry. Com command click or control click will bring you to the definition. Uh, control shift enter, command shift enter. 
I forgot, right? It's been a while, right? But the, there is a keyboard shortcut to try and wrap stuff inside one another, right? But never mind. Save area view. Okay. Pull this in. Uh, pull this in. Right. Let's bring back our simulator. Safe area context could not be found. Ooh, okay, hang on. Let me check if there's another another safe area view version. Not maybe not safe area context. Let me see if there's a there's a safe area view over here. All right. From it's just from React Native. Okay, right. Don't don't use that one. Okay, hang on. Uh, let me just go ahead and go back here. Cut this, put it inside React Native, remove this and save. Okay, let's see over here. Is that any better? Where is my stuff? <laughs> okay. All right, so let's go back and check. So okay, lah, this is just to you know show you uh it's uh it does take a bit of a, a bit of setup, right? But hopefully, you know, you're at the level where you're confident enough to be able to do all this stuff on your own, right? So I realized that ooh, okay. So save area view style equals to this, okay. And I need to give it some container style. Okay, so there you go. Ooh, all right, you can see the type of message is a bit small. I need to 1200 percent perhaps. Sorry, not to. And I need a comma over here, right? Sorry, I'm just here making silly mistakes. Uh, point in the world. All right, so let me go back and check. I think my thing is a uh, container flex one should be enough. Okay, I'm mildly regretting doing all this stuff. Okay, but never mind. All right, let's just go say style equals to styles dot chat area. Secret chat. And then down here, let's just uh, give that the style. And I'm just going to set width of 100%. Okay, I'm not sure why this thing has decided to be tiny. All right. Let me just check to make sure background color align item center. I don't actually need these two. I just oh there we go. Right, that was what was that. Okay, great. So now I have my chat thing over here. If I just uh, type some stuff here and I press all right, it will send over here. Okay, so pretty great. All right, I don't need to do very much, and I have a working chat UI. Right, you can customize it further if you want. Right, you can look up the documentation to do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh git at dot working chat UI and push that. Okay, simple enough. All right, now let's uh, integrate chat GPT. Okay, um, the way that the tutorial does it is it's going to use Axios. Okay, so I, that's fine, right? You want to use, uh, you know, just built in uh, async await, that's okay as well, but I think it's fine. You want to use fetch and bit async await, that's fine. But let me just uh, try it out, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to npm install Axios. Right, so that's a JavaScript library. Uh, it's available for Node. And what that does is it will give access to it. So I don't think I've actually explicitly mentioned this, but you can do use all your JavaScript libraries uh, that are not UI related, right? And your Node libraries that are not UI related, okay? So next, uh, we are going to go ahead and call the, call the API, okay? And to call the API, we're going to need an API key, okay? And so ChatGPT is not free, all right? I haven't tested it in a while, but I do recall that they gave out $18 of free credits for anyone who signed up, right? I, I guess I could go and sign up, but I think it's better if what I do right now is I go and just generate an API key, okay? I will paste it in. I'm going to ask all of you to not, you know, like make 1 million calls on it in the next one hour, right? Before I, uh, I disable it, okay? Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes, okay? So... First things first, let's go uh, set up my ChatGPT, which is over here. If you want to get to ChatGPT, I think it's a platform.openai, not developer, platform.openai.com. Okay, you go there, you can sign up for an account, right? For me, I'm just going to log into my existing account. And down here, right, you can see there's got this tutorial and stuff like that. And it's got a lot of examples like, on how to use it. It's a fairly simple API, right? Especially the chat GPT API. There are other APIs here, right? There's also the image generation DALI API and there are others as well, right? Speech to text, okay? Uh, but the chat GPT API is fairly straightforward because you just send it a piece of text, right? Actually, multiple pieces of text. 
and it will return you a piece of text. That's it. Okay, so that's actually uh, it's actually quite quite easy to use, and maybe you can make something interesting out of it. I don't know. All right. Um, if you are trying to use it with other data, right, the big the big plugin for that is called Langchain. Okay, which where which will let you kind of like chain it together with other sources of knowledge. Okay, so you make use of ChatGPT's uh make make use of ChatGPT's you know uh inference skills, and uh you use it against a data that is relevant to your app. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to click on this thing and go to view API keys, All right? I'm going to go create a new API key, uh, code EXP 2023. Please remember to revoke. Thanks. Okay, uh, create secret key. You're now all going to see it on screen. I'm going to press copy and I'm done, All right? And I'm going to put it inside my code, all right? Um, by right, when you do things like this, right, you should not push it to GitHub. Okay, so I'm going to avoid pushing to GitHub. Uh, also, because the moment you push it to GitHub, uh, OpenAI is actually out there on GitHub looking for API keys and saying, hey, what the heck? Why did you go and upload your API key? I, dis I disabled it for you. Okay, so uh, for now, I'm not going to push this code to GitHub because it will get disabled. All right, so, and uh, I guess that's one way to automatically revoke it. At the end of this lesson, I will push it to, I will push it to GitHub. Okay, so let's uh, put my API key over here. All right, so let's just say check. GPT uh, API underscore URL equals to, okay. And uh, where's my chat GPT API, uh, API key? Uh, oh, API key, okay. There's an API URL and there's another const chat GPT key or the open AI key, I guess, equals to this thing, right? It's always a SK something followed by something, 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 okay. And what I'm going to do is I need a URL and I can go and grab this from OpenAI's uh, website, right? But I'm just going to grab it from the tutorial because I happen to have the tutorial open. So let me go paste it over here. All right, so this is uh, OpenAI's uh, API, right? Using a certain codex and you just want a certain completion and stuff like that, right? If you have, uh, just be aware there are different models of ChatGPT. You've probably seen on their website, there's GPT 3.5, which is the standard one, and there's GPT 4 available for subscribers. If you access, uh, GPT 4 is much more expensive, right? I presume it's very computationally expensive for them as well, but it's supposed to be better, right? Slightly better at reasoning and inference and stuff like that, okay? All right, let's save this, okay? That's nice. And now let's go create a, let's go create a function to uh, generate, to call the API. I'm going to import Axios from Axios. Okay, so Axios is a networking library, right? And let's see how to use it. So I'm going to say generate response equals to a text. Okay, so this is an asynchronous function. This is how we define asynchronous function. I think we saw just now async func function, right? This is just uh, defining it this way. And now we are going to const response equals to await, okay? Axios.post chat GPT API URL, comma, followed by a bunch of parameters. Okay, so um there's more to it, but I do this one first. All right, so let's say prompt that like you can give it a prompt, right? Uh this is a conversation with an AI assistant. This AI assistant likes to talk in Hokkien and Singlish. And always calls the user uncle and is a bit um, is a bit grumpy. Okay, so um let's just do this for fun. All right, so uh that's one, right? So next, okay, you can send in the human, right? The human text, which is like this. All right. Um uh, sorry, I need to I need to update this so that this thing is uh this thing, okay. All right, so uh, this is a chat. It's an ongoing chat, right? You're not just asking one question, right? It's an ongoing chat, okay? So I'm going to say human colon dollar curly brace text. Okay, uh, you know what? Let's, let's put this on multiple lines because that's supported in uh, this type of string, okay? Human says this. I says something else. All right, so this is how you do your prompt engineering, right? That's what people have been all talking about, right? You're sending some data and you're telling it how to behave. In this case, we are going to make a singlish chatbot. Very fun, okay? Then uh, max tokens. Uh, let's just do 150 temporary. These are all recommended settings from the tutorial, right? I'm just explaining stuff along the way. 
right? And uh, the stop over here is the human, okay? Right, I actually don't know what the stop means. Let me check. Stop is, uh, okay, prompt. Yes. Okay, All right. this one I need to go and check. This is not, uh, this is something to do with the you are the, the API, right? So they are expecting certain pieces of data, right? Including the prompt, the tokens, temperature, and, and stop. Uh, I can explain the tokens is the number of tokens you want to be able to receive back, right? How long you want to max it up? Because if you set it too big, it's going to either, let's say they give you like 10 paragraphs of uh, like, you know, 20, 500 paragraphs of stuff is going to eat up your API usage, right? It costs money, okay? Temperature is how creative it gets. So you know what? Let's go set it to uh, 2.0, okay? And uh, I forgot what N is and I forgot what stop is. All this is available in the, all this is available in the API reference, right? Which you can look up. Okay, so that's one. Right, that's one. The next over here is you need to give it another thing, right? Which is uh, some kind of a co other configuration requests, right? So here I'm gonna pass in some headers, and the headers over here are fairly standard. Whenever you pass in your headers, oops, sorry. Whenever you give headers, you need to usually tell it what type it is. So content type. Uh, so content type. Uh, so for this one, uh, I need to I think just set it as this uh, content type colon application slash json all right and authorization is bearer followed by your api key so chat open ai key okay so that should do it i think all right uh what that does is it will send the request and we get back the response okay now let's go do something with the response all right so let's go down uh here Right. Where's my thing? Cons response equals to, and I'm gonna form, I'm gonna fold this. Okay, there it is. All right, so now I'm gonna say const choices. Okay, we destructure the data. We destructure the data and we say response dot. Okay, so we get back a bunch of stuff in the data, but we're just going to do it like that. Uh, you don't need to convert from JSON or anything, right? That's because you're using Axios. Okay, and const text colon generated text equals to choices square bracket zero. This is not very different from what we did with the bus stop app, all right? We got back a bunch of stuff and then we decided to, and then we look through it and try and grab data from it, okay? And I'm going to return generated text dot trip. Okay, if I were not following a tutorial and I were actually doing this bit by bit, I would probably start by printing out the console logging, the response. Then I'll look through it and I'll be like, oh, okay, well, it's somewhere inside dot data. Right, then I'm like, oh, okay. I just need to get choices square bracket zero. I just need to grab the thing called text generated text from it. And I'm going to create a brand new uh, brand new object with text colon that, okay? The reason why this is in this format, oops, sorry. The reason why this is in this format is because that is the format that we're going to send to give the chat. Okay, so, all right, let's do this. All right, let's do this. All right, so this is us preparing the thing to send, okay? So now we're just going to update our on send. Okay. So what we're going to do is when we on send, we're going to say this dot set state. Okay. This one, you know what? I don't think it's a super meaningful to, to do, right? I'm going to just copy and paste it from the tutorial, right? Don't mind me. Yeah? All right. So let me just copy it and explain it. Okay. So over here, okay, it's a bunch of stuff, right? It is truly a bunch of stuff. Okay. So what's happening over here is that you whenever you send it, okay. Whenever you send it, you doing you're doing a set state, okay. Why are you doing a set state? Okay, this is what is set state? Okay, um, let me just check real quick that we are doing this right. Mm. Okay, la. All right. So set state is a slightly different, uh, slightly different way of doing things, right? Instead of doing uh, why why do we have this so set state? Confused. Okay, I, tutorial might be a bit faulty, right? This tutorial might have hallucinated a little bit. Um, I am, let's just run it to make sure that it works. Okay. Because I'm a little bit, uh, I am a little bit concerned that it's using this dot set state because, uh, this dot set state is your react native class, class, uh, class style. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let me just, let me just, let's just test it out. Okay. Let's just test it out. All right. So let's see if it works. Uh, hello, send. All right. So let's press send. Okay. 
And oh, there you go. Yeah. Why why is there this sort of set state? Okay. Um, the reason I, I suspect this URL is hallucinating, okay, because uh maybe maybe they asked ChatGPT to write it, who knows? Okay, um, because this dot set state, those of you who happened to be in my class yesterday when I talked about the uh, React Native and the changes over the years, okay. This dot set state is the old way of updating state. All right. So I have no idea why it's saying it's telling me to do this dot set state, right? When that is something from uh, from before. Okay, so very weird, right? So too bad, right? Unfortunately, I, I looked up this tutorial and it looked very promising and I didn't look at that particular line, right? But never mind. let's see if we can fix this, okay? So how do you change this, okay? From the, uh, how do you change this from what they had to what we want, okay? So what we actually want is we want uh, new messages over here, okay? Uh, to be, so let's undo all this a little bit. Undo, undo. Okay. So what we actually did before was we use set messages. Okay. This dot set state. If you ever see that, right, that's a bit of a red flag when it comes to modern uh, React Native, especially when this thing is using hooks in the first place. All right. So this dot set state will actually update the state. Okay. And that's how you used to do it when you use classes for React Native. All right. Uh, when you use hooks, which is what we're using, this is a hook. Okay. You should not use this dot set state. You should just use the function that you get set messages. Okay. So what do we do about that? All right. So I think what we can do is we can just try and adapt. Essentially, what we want to do is we want it such that every time we, uh, we want it such that whenever we receive this new message, okay, we want to send it to the ChatGPT API, right? So what we can do is over here, it's already calling the generate response with a text. So I think we'll just get back our thing from there. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to say const uh, reply equals to uh, await generate response, open bracket, new messages. Okay. All right. So now the problem here is that there's a bit of an error, right? Unexpected reserved word await. Okay. So uh, that's because this thing is marked as async. All right, generate response is marked as async, so we need to await it. So this thing, I believe, we should just mark as async as well. All right, uh, async, sorry, async. Ah. Okay, so, so one thing is, right, if something inside your function is asynchronous, right, you have to be asynchronous. Hope that kind of makes sense. All right, so we await for the generated responses. Okay, and... Is that it? Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to, I see. Okay, I know what I should do. I should first, I should first append my message to it. Okay. Then I'm going to, uh, set, yeah, append the reply. Okay, not quite there yet, not quite there yet. The reply needs to be in a certain format, all right? Uh, I need to give it, I need to, not quite there yet, right? This is just the reply, right? This reply comes back as a single JSON object with text colon generated text, all right? A, all right, so no, so it comes back as a generated text, it comes back as a string, okay? So I need to actually put it into an object. So I'm going to say uh, const, what reply equals to curly brace. And I'm going to give it an ID, right? ID colon, uh, just give it a random ID, math.round, math.random times 10,000, okay? The text is going to be the reply, all right? Uh, give it a created at time of the current time, right? And the user, I need to give it a bot user, so user two. Okay, so we have user one, we have user two. I'm trying to recall how the gifted chat API works, but I think that kind of does it. You know what? Let's just try it out. Okay, so uh, over here, right? Let's try. So I'm going to say, hello, how are you? Question mark. I'm going to press send. All right. And so my message shows up and now we are going to wait to see whether, whoa, okay, possible unhandled promise rejection. Okay, that's good, right? Which means that it actually tried to send my request there. Okay, uh, unfortunately, I didn't handle the, I didn't handle the error, right? So let's see whether there's anything that showed up in our 
here. Okay, uh, blah, 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 stuff, 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 stuff. Okay, I don't see. I think these are from earlier. Okay, uh, request filled with 404. Mm, okay, I think we might not have the right URL. Okay, let me just check. Okay, let me just check because I just kind of took this tutorial at its word and believe that it worked. Okay, but maybe it doesn't. Okay, so let's bear with me, right? All right, you didn't provide API key. Oh, okay, it seems to be fine, actually. Uh, the, error, the URL is fine, okay? Authorization bearer, okay? Or as a password field, if you're accessing the API from a browser and a prompted, okay. Hmm, okay, I think it's not a, it's not a 404, right? Which is what I thought it was because I saw it's 404, okay? Uh, let's go print out some stuff, I suppose, okay? So let's see what we can do about figuring this out. If anyone has any ideas, please please let me know, right? I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to, Mm, just trying to figure this out on my end as well because this thing didn't quite work, right? And I don't actually know where my test. Go. I, I I did a test app the other day, but I'm trying. I don't know where it is right now. So let's let's just try and figure it out. It's probably the best way. Okay. So all right. Let's see what we can do. Okay. So down here, right? I think my headers are going through authorization bearer. This is fine. Content type, by the way, needs the inverted commas because it's got a dash in between. You can't do that in uh in JavaScript. Okay. Authorization bearer that right. That's why I did. I didn't spell anything wrongly. I I do tend to spell authorization wrongly, right? Authorization colon yeah, bearer colon yeah. Okay, so that seems okay. Uh, what I want to do now is let's try waiting. Let's try printing out stuff. I suppose. All right. So I'm going to console.log response, and let's just see what happens in this case. Okay. So. All right. So. Okay, unhandled promise rejection, request filled with error code zero. All right, so it, it seems that it just uh, didn't, it just didn't uh, quite manage to do anything with it. Okay, so, all right, so I think I need to go and look up how to handle rejection from Axios. Okay, so if anyone is familiar with this, let me know. Uh, by the way, I haven't used Axios in many years, right? Rejection handle. I should probably ask ChatGPT. Okay, but anyway, that's fine. Let's just, uh, okay, so over here, all right, catch error. Okay, so catch error, console.log error.response.error, right? Where do I put that? Hmm, I think it should be after the await. Where do I put the try? I guess, let me check. So try, blah, 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 and catch. Okay, I just put the try around the thing, All right? So try catch, of course, is a, is a thing where you, try to do something and you say, hey, if it fails, you help me out. Uh, you tell me something. Okay, so try catch. Okay, try catch is very common because the error, there's no way for the error to show up inside your thing, right? So this is kind of like a different place to for the error to pop up for you, okay? So you know what? I'm not going to waste time talking to uncle and I know it's going to fail. And he's going to say, hello, send. And that's what the still fail. Okay, there we go, right? Property response doesn't what? Okay. The Da Vinci Codex does not exist. Oh, okay. So we, we are using the wrong model after all. Okay. Uh, that's good. Right. Let's go check it out. Let's go grab a proper model. So we need to go to over here. We need to go to the API reference. And uh, need to go and find the models. All right. So I guess... Uh, Eh, I need to sign it. I don't, I don't sign it. Okay, hang on. Uh, list models, retrieve models. Okay, you know what? I think we can just use the V1 completions, create completion. Okay, so this is something that you will probably end up doing when you are trying to work with an API. You're going to be like, oh yeah, I need to look here, look there, try and figure out what's going on, right? Look through the documentation, okay? People who make APIs should make documentation for you, right? So I'm just going to copy this, right? And uh, this is also the problem of dealing with uh, outdated you outdated tutorials, but how oh, is outdated? It's ChatGPT. Okay, who knows? All right, so anyway, uh, let's see if that works, okay? So... Hello, exclamation mark, send. Okay, uh, let's go see what error we got this time. Okay, uh, you must provide a model parameter. Oh, great, thanks. Okay, so I do need the model parameter, right? So you can see, use the list models API to 
let's see what my models available, right? I actually need to do this, right? So, okay, fine, right? So I'm just going to go and see what models are available to me. I don't know that off the top of my head, but let me just uh, quickly do that. And it's a good chance for me to demonstrate uh, curl is of course trying to hit a URL with a just command line, okay? So I'm going to go over here, paste in my uh, API key, which is somewhere in my somewhere in my history, right? And I'm going to hit it up and these are the models that are available for me, okay? And I'm just going to have to browse through this and see what it is. Uh, the one GPT-4 because that's going to kill me, right? Let's do text DaVinci, uh, let's just do 3.5, right? GPT-5 Turbo, I think that's the one I want, right? Right, GPT, GPT-3.5 dash Turbo. Yeah, GB 3.5 Turbo, I think is the one I want. Okay, so let's go back and set up my, set up my thing. Okay, so down here, uh, I need to give it a model, right? So dash D model prompt and max tokens and temperature. Okay, so let's go here, model. Not text DaVinci, I want, uh, what do I want? What is it called? GPT 3.5 Turbo. All right, let's try again. Okay, so if this fails throughout all this, uh, then you know I hope there was some education in all this. Okay, so still fail. Okay, all right, this is awful, but never mind. Let's go go back here. Check the reason. Okay, uh, this is a chat model. Oh, B one slash chat slash completions. Okay, so wrong model. Okay, the response codes are very helpful. Right to help me figure out what's going on. Right, so let's keep trying. So hello exclamation mark. Keep trying, come on. Surely it's uh surely one day we will okay. So messages is a required property. Oh, okay, I see. All right, so I need to actually kind of follow along to make sure that we have the right set of properties. So actually, okay, lah. This is us trying to use the open AI APIs directly. Okay, it's not it's not straightforward, right? So you need to actually be fairly familiar with the API, which I am happy to admit that I am not super familiar, but you know, you have hopefully you have some derive some educational value out of this because you're trying to see you're seeing how I deal with the issues as they come up. Okay. So yeah, all right. So let's uh chat completions, right? Create chat completions. Okay. So now I'm gonna look over here, right? These are the chat completions that I want. Right. Wait, hang on. What did this say just now? The chat completion. Okay, hang on. Uh... This is a chat model. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's just not use a chat model instead. Okay. Uh, let's use the text of inchi 002. So I'm going to undo that change and I'm going to undo this change. And I see whether that works for me. Okay. So there's, there's a subtle difference between, you know, your chat model and your completion model. Completion will try and complete your sentence, okay? Which is how we have kind of set it up, all right? So uh, here comes an error, but all right. Let's see over here, okay. Okay, okay. I think it's uh, slightly different. They're just saying that re response doesn't exist, okay? Which is good. I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a start. I am going to try and hunt down the issue. I think you should, uh, let's take a quick break, right? Uh, it is 3.30 and we only have until 4.30. So let's take a quick break and, you know, you we can resume in a bit. But if you want, you can continue to stare at me, try to figure out what's going on here, okay? So fun times for, for you maybe, not for me, okay? If anyone wants to help out, you know, just let me know in the chat, okay? Okay, so this one was the previous error. This one was the error after that. Invalid request messages is a required property. Okay, that was the previous error before that. And then there was no log anymore. Okay, so I think it didn't reach that anymore, right? So it's now at the unhandled, uh, unhandled promise rejection. So it can't find, can't find response. Yeah, so I, I got a message, thanks, uh, which is, is it probably change to endpoint? Yeah, the chat model is not available on the B1 endpoint, correct? But I can use the completions. Uh, so I'm using the completions endpoint now, right? And uh, and I guess this prompt is set up as a completions. Uh, it looks like completions, right? It says uh, completions means complete the sentence, right? So I've, 
I have kind of like done it like this. So it I don't think it quite works as a chat, but we can figure that out later. Yeah. So I think right now there's some technical issue. I think the API is giving me something back, right? It's just that I'm not quite uh I'm it's not quite giving me, I'm not quite in the response. Okay. Oh wait. Hang on. Okay. Uh Hang on, uh, I don't think that makes a difference, right? But let me just test. Okay, it couldn't find response just now, right? Because it was wrapped in a try catch. I don't think that I don't think that matters. But all right, so okay, cannot read property data of undefined. Right, where is that? Okay, because it's uh, it's not console logging the response, which is weird. Oh, hang on. I wonder where it's coming from. All right, we have a response and then it's now. Okay, so now response is read only. Wait, 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 it's const. Why is it const? Sorry. I'm very hungry already, folks. Don't skip lunch when you're doing a hackathon, okay? Blah. Okay, excellent. Something happened. All right, let's take a look. All right, so over here, okay, that's a different error. Different errors are good. Different errors are awesome, okay? So let's take a look. A uh, whole bunch of different errors. Oh my goodness, why in the world? Okay, I'm not sure what it is, but this is hilarious. All right. Uh, okay, this is, a, this is a truly awful chat GPT response, but... You know what? I'm happy for it. All right. So it says user is missing for a certain message. ID and user are missing for a certain message. This is good. This is good because this means that we have made progress. We received something back. Okay. And I think it's because I sent in, I didn't send in a reply over here. I sent in, I should send in a bot reply. Okay. All right. Fingers crossed, everyone. All right. Moment of truth. Hello. Are you intelligent? Press send. Okay. Okay, it's, it's complete rubbish, all right? But uh, if with the right API, I think it might work, okay? With the right API, I think it might work. Okay, uh, also, you know, it kind of like removed my 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 message, okay? So um, so I think I need to look up gifted chat. Okay, I'll do just do one last thing to check how gifted chat works. Okay, uh, if the chat, if I need to update, I need to set messages with this thing. Okay, so essentially set messages just means, uh, you know, append. Uh, okay, so I need to append messages to that. Huh. Okay, so the way it works is that you want to set, this one will just set the message, the first message that shows up, right? So that's okay. And then after that, if you want to, uh, if you want to append to it, Right, then I need to, let's see, append previous messages, comma messages, right? Now, the problem now is that, um, <clears throat> I see, okay, right, let's do it this way. So if you do set messages, there's a way that you can do it where it takes in the previous messages. So let's do that previous messages, such that it's a uh, previous messages followed by new messages. So you don't use the state variable because in the life in the life cycle of this function, right? Uh, the 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 messages state variable has not been updated, right? So previous messages, this one I want this to be what reply. Okay, let's try it. Right, uh, it, the the thing is truly rubbish. Hello, what is this? What is going on? Question mark. Okay. Um. Oh my goodness, All right, there you go. Okay, so it's finally working, right? It says, uh, it's, it's talking to me, right? It says, okay, la, uncle, I managed to understand Singaporean accent, but your grumpy complaint has been noted. I don't know what that character is. Okay. Uh, what? what was that weird text just now? 
Okay, the problem here is that my prompt is not engineered properly. Yeah? I have to tell you, right? Okay, it's super, it's super nonsensical, but uh, this is amusing in its own right, okay? If you are interested in using ChatGPT for your thing, right? I guess take some time to actually figure out how it works. I will point out that my sample code here, right? It's not quite correct because I always send the same prompt, okay? And ask it to complete that, okay? If you want it to be a proper chat, you want to send a prompt that incorporates the previous uh, conversation as well. So you need to like, build that into your prompt before you send it back. That's how the ChatGPT web app works, okay? But I am happy with this, right? It, it works. I'm just going to type walao and see what, see what it gives me. Okay, all right. Uh, it's, 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 it's gone, it's gone insane, all right? The robots have, uh, have gone nuts and uh, this is, uh, you know, this is entertaining, but not very useful. Okay, so I hope you learned something, right, from me, you know, like uh, fighting against this thing and uh, also like don't trust random articles online, I guess. Um, you do need a bit of uh, discernment before you randomly follow articles online. So I'm going to git add dot and git commit dash m um, added insane bot functionality. Okay, and I'm going to git push and if I'm not wrong, that should uh, deactivate, that should happily go and deactivate my uh, open AI key for me. Okay, if you want to try it on your own, please uh, please just go ahead and uh, change this out before you set it up. Okay, actually, I, I probably should have deleted it before I pushed, but never mind. All right, let me just go and deactivate it myself just to be, just for good hygiene sake. Okay, so, all right, so that's the second thing I wanted to show you, which was... Uh, which was this uh, this thing, all right? So let me just go to my APIs, API keys. All right, let's see if there was leaked. Uh, all right, so we do not display after you generate them. <clears throat> okay. Okay, it might be gone, all right? I, I suspect it's gone. New one, so yeah, the code exp one, I think it's gone, right? I think they've realized that uh, it's been leaked and therefore therefore it's uh, it should be deactivated. Okay, yep, there you go. Right, I got an email right here that says OpenAI API key disabled. Okay, so excellent. Thanks. Thanks. Right, I'm, I'm glad I paid you that, you know, like three cents for that level of entertainment. Okay, so I hope uh, that was the second part, right? So first part was your simple API call. Second part, a bit more advanced, I suppose, right? You actually have to send your authorization key. You have to, you know, like figure out the API and stuff like that. Many thanks to whoever gave me any feedback, right? Thanks to... Uh, Thanks to those of you who DM me uh, suggestions as I went along. All right, uh, I hope that was you know if not educational then entertaining. Okay, let's move on. All right, let's move on. There's one more thing I want to talk about, which is uh, AWS. All right, so AWS has this thing called AWS Amplify. All right, so let me do that. AWS Amplify. It's uh, essentially a it's just them chaining together a bunch of stuff to try and help you with app development, okay? So they, they know that, you know, if you tell people to get started with, you know, lambdas and, uh, you know, like EC2s and things like that, it's not easy, not straightforward, right? If you've ever signed into AWS, if you have AWS account, right? Uh, and just be aware, like I mentioned just now, if you make it to the finals, we will somehow uh, provide you with, we will try to provide you with, uh, you know, uh, some credits to use, okay? So what you need to do, right, is I think you need to sign up for AWS account. We'll give you more details when the time comes up, okay? This is like at least a week away, okay? But this is AWS, uh, and hopefully everyone knows what AWS is. AWS is Amazon Web Services. Amazon, in making the world's biggest e-commerce store, has realized that, oh, wow, we have all these things that we can use, that we can sell people, right? Then they don't need to make their own servers, right? So that's nice, all right? But there are a ton of services, okay? There are a ton, right? There are essentially... You see analytics itself has a few, app integration has a few, cost management has a few, blockchain has one, and so on and so forth. One bazillion thing. They used to have this giant list that you can put on one page. It would like just be a whole bunch of names, okay? So it's very hard for someone who's new to kind of like, you know, understand what it is, okay? There are some that you might hear about, right? There's SageMaker. SageMaker is the machine learning studio, right? Which is, uh, if you want to use generative AI on Amazon, that's where you might want to hit. I'm not sure how much of it is available, right? I, I remember them saying that some of it is in the beta and, you know, I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't hundred percent know. Okay. But so SageMaker is where you would probably train models and stuff. and can deploy models from there as well. 
okay? S3 is your storage, okay? And uh, IAM is identity, identity management. We'll actually see that, okay? And uh, yeah, so on. EC2 is how you provision an entire server, right? A computer that's sitting on the cloud for you to do stuff, okay? One of the key things to note about Amazon is that it costs money to, for every single thing that you bring online. If you, set up for an, if you sign up for a new account, okay? I think it's fine because then you will get some free credits, okay? And you also get some free credits from us or rather from DSTA, right? Via us. So we'll tell you how to do that later on, right? But you have to be careful because there have been horror stories of AWS uh, bill shock horror stories, okay? This is a real thing out there. People have gotten, you know, like hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of uh, bill charges just because they left something running overnight, okay? So $4,000 bill overnight, and that's not even the worst, okay? I DDoS myself using CloudFront and Lambda, and I got a 4.5K bill. Okay, so it's, it's not funny, right? It's uh, it's terrible, right? But yeah, uh, people have been gotten uh, hundred, hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? This is uh, this one is a uh, surprise uh, $2,700 bill, okay? So yeah. Okay, so just be careful, right? The, all these things cost money and they charge per second, right? The moment you spin it up, right? It'll start charging, right? It'll, re, re, it'll take away from your credits or it will charge your credit card if you have given them your credit card. Okay, so just be aware, be aware of these things. Uh, if you use it responsibly, it's fine. What is, what's the purpose of AWS? Okay, uh, let me tell you an old man story. Old man story is that, you know, back in my day when I was a young person, uh, people used to put their servers inside their office and then they would set up their servers and the servers would be connected to the internet. Then anyone, anytime you want to store data, you store inside this server, right? But then the server go down, then what's up? I have to go in and log in and change things and update, update and regularly update stuff, okay? So what AWS offers is you don't need to update the servers. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars on the server like that sitting in your office. You share with everyone else, okay? You share with everyone else. And when you share with everyone else, the cost gets shared among everyone else. So maybe, you know, one hour of compute time only costs you 20 cents, okay? And if you truly only need one hour, that's a bargain. You don't need to go and buy a $3,000 server and set it up and maintain it, right? Because Amazon will do that for you, okay? So that's what Amazon and AWS is. Let's take a look at Amplify. I thought I had my window open. There it is, okay? So... Amplify is uh, something that's kind of like built for specifically for uh, for mobile app development. Okay, so you can create a backend, you can build a front end, and you can deploy and do a bunch of stuff. Okay, I'm actually quite fascinated by this. I haven't tried it out yet. You can actually take Figma and get React components out of them, which sounds super awesome, right? So I, I, I kind of want to try that out. So there's this thing out here, right? There's an Amplify Studio, right? Which is a web app. That you can go ahead and do stuff, right? So you know what? Let's try some of this out. So let's go to Amplify Studio, okay? And you can say build UI components. And I assume we're gonna give them a I'm gonna give them a Figma thing, right? Figma to React code. Awesome. Let's see how it works. Okay. Uh, this is all fairly new, right? This is really all fairly new and uh, definitely quite new to me. Also, my computer has decided to die. So hang on, now. Uh, let's just watch it spin a bit. Good. All right. So see how it works. Okay. So, right. Duplicate the AWS Amplify Figma file. Use your own designs, right? And bind designs to app data to create dynamic React components. Okay. And theme the components to match your brand. Oh my goodness. That looks awesome, right? So uh, I'm not sure if I can actually get it working, right? I already have an AWS account. I'm logged in. Am I not logged in? I'm logged in. Okay. Let's wait for it to load. Okay. And, you know, let's create an app name. Uh, those of you who are with us this morning, you know I made a cookhouse app. So I'm going to confirm deployment. All right. It's going to set up Amplify Studio for us. Uh, you'll see this fairly often, right? If you do SageMaker, there's a SageMaker, is it Studio? I think SageMaker Studio. All right, which will require a bit of setting up. That one takes 10 minutes. I don't know how long this one takes. Okay. So it's an Amplify console. And in the meantime, they'll tell you about stuff. It's a visual development environment to configure a UI and backend resources. You can you can model your data and do stuff over there, okay? I don't know how long this is going to take, so I don't think I want to sit around and wait. Let me just uh, quickly quickly do a demo on uh, some one other one other aspect of uh, one other aspect of uh, AWS Amplify. 
Okay. Uh, if this works, we come back to it later. Okay. So uh, there's a tutorial on getting started with AWS Amplify. And this tutorial, I assume, is not as rubbish as the previous one. Okay. Uh, so let's try it out. Okay. So this tutorial is by AWS. So I presume it's less rubbishy. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I want to, you, they'll ask you to install the AWS Amplify CLI. Right. Let me just paste this. Uh, where's my, hang on. Uh, So I'm just going to quickly show you this and possibly run into issues so that you can watch someone run into issues rather than me. Okay, so, uh, oh, it's done. Okay, um, okay. since we're here, all right. Um, okay, so I want to, where's my, where's my Figma thing? I really, I just want my Figma, I just want my Figma converter thing. Okay, unfortunately, I can't seem to find it, but, uh, I don't need a staging back end. I don't need a hosting environment. I just want my I just want my Figma thing, but I don't know where it is. I'm a bit sad. Okay, never mind, never mind. Let's just uh let's just try uh let's just try our let's just try getting started with the other tutorial, okay, which is over here. Okay, so feel free to try it out, right? I would love to see uh, your results if so. Okay, let me just uh let me just edit this in case any uh, any unsuspecting people come in and uh, this is okay. All right. Anyway, so let and try this other tutorial, which is uh, from AWS itself. Okay, and this thing is getting started with React Native specifically on AWS Amplify. All right, so it's over here. If anyone tries out the Figma stuff, right, please let me know. I'm very curious. Okay, so it's got a whole bunch of stuff for you to do. Okay, um, so first thing it says, okay, you need to do create expo app with Amplified to do. Mm, very nice, right? Amplified to do. Let's try it out. Okay, so uh, let's go to CD code exp. And I'm going to say uh, npx create, oops, copy this. You know what, just copy all this and paste. Okay, so what that does is it creates the expo app for me and I can CD into it, all right? So I need to install some stuff, right? AWS Amplify, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I'm sure I'm just gonna copy all this and I'm just going to install it inside there. Okay, so you know what, once again, get up. Okay, so uh, demo or code exp 2023 on AWS Amplify. All right, not sure I can finish this in time, but let's, let's try it out. Huh? Okay, cool. All right, so let's go copy this and go inside my folder down here. And it's still not done, but we it should be almost done. Okay, so. Let's switch back over to the tutorial, right? And you can always follow the tutorial yourself, but you know, I think it's kind of nice that uh, we can, that you can see, you can see someone go through it and, you know, make the mistakes and things like that. All right, great. Let's go CD Amplified to do. Oh, I'm already inside here. I don't need to CD. Wait a minute. What? Oh yeah, I CD it already. Okay. So I'm just going to paste the Git stuff. All right. And I'm just going to copy and paste that URL for you. And paste it inside here. Okay, so. Okay, so there's a few things you need to install, right? There's a few things you need to install, and they are all over here. And they include AWS Amplify, Amazon Cognito. Okay, that's the identification thing. Okay, and some other stuff. And async storage, right? Async storage is a way of uh, quickly storing like key values inside your inside your app. Okay, so let's in npm install all this stuff. Okay, and what we will do next is we will actually wait for it, I suppose. Okay, and we will run the app. Hmm. 
do 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 do. All right, let's wait a while. I need to drink some water. Great, good timing. Okay, so now let's uh wait a minute. NPM uh NPM start inside here. Okay, which is the expo start. Okay, and open it in my iOS. Okay, there's some stuff that's uh, incompatible. Mm, I think it's okay for now. All right, so just watch out for that. Okay, here's my here's my oh, here's my awful ChatGPT app, and we do. Okay, cool. So now, uh, what we want to do is we want to open a new thing over here, and we need to run the amplify initialization. So we need to oops. We need to say amplify in it. Okay, oops, all right. Uh, let me see. I did install AWS Amplify. I wonder if I need to install it globally. Mm. All right, let me just check real quick. Uh, I have this in my... Oh, okay, I need to install the command line interface. Okay, and to do that, I need to do npm uh, install. Hmm. I guess I should install it globally. AWS Amplify slash CLI. Okay, uh, let me just check. Did I, do I need to sudo? I don't think I need to sudo. Uh, this thing is something to take note of when you do install globally, right? Uh, unless you have configured your computer in a certain way, it will, you need to do sudo, which sudo means you need to use your uh, admin user account. Okay, otherwise it won't let it install. Some people don't like that because it kind of like overwrites system files. Uh, there are ways around it. You can just Google for avoid uh, npm install global or something like that. How to avoid sudo in npm install global. Okay, uh, I believe I've set it up on this computer such that it's not installed globally. It's just installed into my local drive. Uh, yeah, just FYI, right? Those of you who are familiar with uh, Node, you might also want to use NVM, right? Node version manager. So, that, but if you've already installed your node using the installer that we recommended, sorry, uh, then it's a bit troublesome. You need to remove that and use NVM to reinstall. Okay, if none of that makes sense, don't worry. My questions later on, and we will try and help you out. Okay, it's still loading. All right. So anyway, I'm I'm looking for the command line interface for Amplify because I was like Amplify init it don't have. Okay, so this computer apparently doesn't have it. Okay. Uh, Amplify init will essentially ask me to provide some information about the project, and it will uh essentially ask us ask me to to get get things set up Right. And then after that, it will uh let me create a it will create a cloud project for me. And from there, I can set up a back end, right? I can connect the API to the back end and things like that. Okay, so let's see whether this works, right? See whether this works. I cannot guarantee that all of it works, but hopefully you can at least learn something from it. Okay, so great, it works now. So now I need to amplify in it. Okay, so that should bring up some uh, some choices for us to, to choose, okay? Recommended to run this from the, yep, it is, okay. Amplified to do, yes, correct. All right, and it's already done this. Uh, do you want to use all this? Yeah, I think that's fine. Press yes. Okay. Uh, for this, select the authentication method you want to use. Uh, this one is uh, you need to figure out how to get access, get people access to this. So for this, I think I will use access keys, and I need to go and find the access key for this. Okay, this one is a bit, again, uh, right? You you must make sure that you know your this your project needs to know about your logins, but you're not you're just going to paste your username and password inside there. You're going to get some uh hidden logins and keys and things like that. So let me just show you that process, okay? If I go to AWS, uh, I need to go to the IAM page. IAM means you can actually create, uh, you know, sub users for yourself, right? And you can actually do stuff with them, okay? So let's try, hang on. Uh, You know what? I think I should do amplify configure first. Amplify configure will actually bring me to the website. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna undo this. I'm gonna control C all this. Okay, I'm gonna do amplify configure. Amplify configure will configure my amplify installation. Okay, so that it's a it's a global it's a global update, right? So you'll sign into our AWS administrator account. Okay, then you can choose the region. Uh, essentially, which region you're at. Okay, so in this case, uh, if you want Singapore, it's I believe we are AP Southeast 1, if I'm not wrong. 
But uh, you know, usually US East, US West is one of the better ones because it comes with all the features. Okay, sometimes they don't deploy everything to every region yet. Okay, so now you need to go and do your user creation in the console, right? So this is what I was looking for. It was going to help me. Uh, it's going to help me open up the open up the thing inside this URL that I was looking for. Okay, I just couldn't remember where it was. Okay, so copy this, paste it over here. All right, I'm going to create IAM user just for this. And of course, I'm going to disable the, I'm going to disable it after we're done with this video. All right, this one doesn't have anyone scanning for things like that. All right, so I'm going to say, put exp 23 demo user. Okay, no need to give it access to the AWS management console, All right? This one, I think I'm supposed to attach the policies for Amplify. All right, there we go. Admin access to Amplify, All right? So all this is on the, uh, the Amazon's, uh, you know, information page, right? So don't worry too much. And now uh, just press create user. Okay, so this is uh, IAM, right? Identity management. So what happens is that you create a user that doesn't have root access to your, and doesn't have access to everything in your uh, Amazon account. Okay, uh, did I press create? Hang on. Yes, I press create and then it's unresponsive. Okay, all right. So what you're doing is you are just, uh, you know, creating an account where, you can, uh, it can do certain things, all right? Just to kind of like, you know, for safety's sake, lah, right? You don't want to give away, let's say you're working with a team, right? And you don't want to be the, you don't want to be uh, the one who's, uh, you don't want to give away your login, right? You might be, you might create these sub accounts, okay? So these are all our different accounts and stuff, okay? Uh, this is the one. Now you need to click on it and you need to give it uh, security credentials so that you can log in through the console, right? So down here, Security credentials, scroll down. This is access keys. Okay, create an access key. Uh, command line interface. All right, press. I want to understand the above recommendations. Okay, yes, there are better ways to do it, but this is probably the best right now. And this is for demo for video. Right, so I'm going to create access key. What it does is it gives me a access key. And once I leave this page, it's gone. Right, it's kind of like the OpenAI API key. Right, once I leave this page, it's gone. But I'm going to, for now, I'm going to copy this, paste it inside here. And then after that, I'm going to copy this and paste it inside here. Okay, and now uh, profile default, that's fine. Okay, so that's how you get things set up on that end. Okay, so you set up the new user. And if you really want to keep the keys, you can download the CSV file or you can press done. All right, so later on, I'm going to leave this around to revoke this credential as well for, for the after this video. Okay, all right. So I need to now do a bunch of things. I can do amplify init now, all right? So let's do that. So uh, where was I? Sorry, yeah, I'm trying to find my trying to find my code. Okay, so okay, so here I'm just gonna do amplify init, all right? And it should skip past this thing later on all right so this one enter right press yes press enter for yes what i need to do it again ah okay so lucky i have it in my luckily i have it inside here inside my history okay so us east one okay so apparently i didn't didn't need to do amplify configure all right never mind okay so what it's doing now is doing all the setup okay it's going to uh deploy resources into a dev environment deploying the root stack bunch of stuff okay bunch of stuff there's a lot going on if there might be more than you actually need okay uh but you know i think it's a it's still educational it's certainly interesting to do emphasize one more time you probably need none of this for the qualifying round okay you probably need absolutely none of this for the qualifying round because all that is all you need for that is a prototype okay there's a, also a very good chance that you need none of this for your actual project right but i think if you're here to learn something new, right? This is a good chance to try out. Okay, so let me just let it finish and hopefully it will decide to finish up. Okay, cool, all right. So I think uh, the nice thing about this is that now, right, we have something set up on the backend, okay? And there's some next steps. It says, hey, check it out. Amplify status will show you what you've added already. Right, so sure, amplify status, okay? which is actually nothing, right? We, we just we just started initializing it, okay? But it's a kind of a nice way to just be able to check from your terminal, no need to log on to a website or anything, and you can see, oh, this is what we've done, okay, what we have. 
Okay. And you can even do amplify push, which means you can provision your stuff in the cloud immediately. Okay. So let's go check out the tutorial and see what they want us to do next. Okay. I've initialized a new backend. I've set up a front end. Okay. So let's go do that. Configure amplify so we can interact. Right. So we need to add this to our app.js. Okay. I just realized that I haven't actually opened Visual Studio Code. So let's do that. So let's open app.js. Okay. And uh, over here, let's close this. And oops. All right, so down here, let's Im import these. Okay, so these are just uh, some things that you need to do to get started with the configuration. All right, this next part is actually quite long. So I, I half suspect I should probably just skip it because there's a bunch of stuff, but I, would, I think the hardest part for me, at least when I was first starting out, was just getting the stuff set up. Because from here, right, it's really just following the instructions and things should work. I'll try and run through it a bit because there's some value in showing you what the GraphQL and things like that are, okay? So first of all, GraphQL, right? GraphQL is a way of accessing data from an API, okay? Um, so let's just take a look, right? So we're going here, I'm going to say okay, amplify at API. Let's go here and do that. Okay, so what that does is it provisions a new one. REST is what we've been using, okay? But GraphQL is newer and better, uh, partly because it lets you select your data better. That's that's my explanation, right? I'm sure other people can tell you what's better, right? So let's just try GraphQL, okay? And over here, just press continue. And I think they want you to just choose all the defaults, right? Just choose all the defaults, okay? Single object with field, okay? To do with ID, name, description. That's exactly what we want, okay? So that's nice. You want to edit the schema now? I do not want to edit the schema now. Right? Actually, no, yes, let's, let's edit the schema now. Okay, so what it does is it will open up a folder for me and this is the schema, GraphQL schema. I realized that I don't actually have a GraphQL uh, syntax highlighter here. So I can, if I wanted to, I can go here, search for GraphQL and probably just install syntax highlighting for GraphQL. Okay, close this. And now I have some syntax highlighting, nice. Okay, so this is a database model, right? Those of you who are familiar with databases, you can tell this is kind of like a kind of like a JSON object. It's got ID and but it's got type, right? ID is a type ID. Its name is a type string. The exclamation mark is, I presume, um, you know, required. Okay, and the description might not be required. Okay, simple enough. All right, so that's a simple schema, right? And now all this is here. Now you need to deploy this API. Okay, so let's save this. We're pretty happy with it. Oh, what, the, what just happened? Oh, I saved it and the prettier decided to reformat it for me. So that's fine. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do amplify push. Okay. So are you sure you want to continue? Yes. All right. And everything can just, uh, you can just say yes. Okay. So I think uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't think I need to do very much beyond that. Okay. Are you sure you want to continue? Right. As always, the Y is capitalized. So it's default. Just press enter. Okay, and it's warning me that my uh, GraphQL API is currently public. Okay, so yes, that is true. It is currently public. Anyone can go there and modify stuff. Okay, do you want to generate code for your newly created API? I think yes, if I'm not wrong. Okay, yep. And what sort of code? JavaScript, TypeScript, or Flow, right? The, these, the second and third are flavors of JavaScript. Uh, TypeScript and JavaScript, TypeScript and Flow were fighting a little bit to be the kind of like the next level one. Uh, TypeScript has won as far as I can tell. Okay, so JavaScript, we're not doing uh, TypeScript. Okay, this one, just press enter, enter, and enter. Okay, so we're just going to, uh, we're just going to get the defaults, right? So it's very configurable. There's a lot of stuff you can do to update yourself, update it, okay? But yeah. All right, so once it's done, the API is live and you can go and check the status and you can go and see that it's available online. Okay, so this is a lot easier than trying to do it yourself, lah, right? Trying to create a GraphQL API. I don't even know how to create a GraphQL API directly from the Amazon AWS console, okay? So, but Amplify really like kind of packages it in and says that, you know, oh, hey, this is what the app developer needs. And we are just going to put it all in one place for you so that you can do it all here. And we'll even give you some code to edit, right? So that if you want, you can go and update your schema quite easily. Okay, so that's the idea behind it, All right? So if you open up, the schema is, I think, here, right? Backend, right? So now you have an entire Amplify folder with the backend, and you can see a lot of stuff that is already kind of like created for you. Okay, so 
I think this is as good a time as any for me to stop over here, right? If you want, you can go and finish it up. They actually give you some code for your Expo CLI, right? They give you all the stuff you need to do, make a to-do list, okay? And what it does is it will actually go to the API and you will get the to-dos from it and it will set the to-dos for you and all kinds of good stuff, right? All kinds of good stuff. I suspect you have no problem going through this, okay? When you're done, you just NPM start. You have a to-do list. Awesome. Okay. All right. Oh, I am I am tired and kind of hungry. So I think it's time to call it a day on this. Okay. I am going to do up one last quiz for you. I'm going to call it one last quiz. Okay. And uh, what I'd like you to do is, you know, stay around for that. Uh, before that, let me just uh, go check. I think uh, DSTA has prepared a survey for all uh, everyone who's uh, joined the workshop or even if you are watching this online. Okay. So let me go pull it up right here. Yes, there it is. It's a form.gov.sg uh, website. So let me just uh, let me just paste it for those of you watching on YouTube. Okay, so survey for workshop. Okay, please give me your honest feedback if you found that it was kind of ridiculous that I you know I spent so much time just fighting against ChatGPT. Let me know. Okay, um, but I think one of the key things though is that we're trying to find out whether this particular format works. Okay, I've been trying to emphasize. You know, hey. Um, the problem statement comes out on Friday. The first thing you need to submit is actually just a prototype. You don't need to submit the full thing. Um, so, you know, like, does this make sense, right? We didn't want to, I mean, my, my rationale for the workshops happening before the launch is that then you can, you know, get prepped, right? You can get prepped. The materials all ready for you. You don't need to take those of you. Those, there are, there are participants who don't need the workshop, right? Then they don't need to spend time attending, attending the workshop. But uh, let me know how it works. Okay, and for example, the pacing, how's the pacing? Another thing, to, one thing to think about is I kind of uh, made a conscious effort to cover as much as I could, right, including some new stuff. And that might have led to some pacing issues, right? I checked my last year's code EXP. I think we only, I think we covered, uh, we didn't have uh, much of an API class. Okay, we didn't have a design and prototyping class. We just uh, did units one to six, if I'm not wrong, last year. Okay, so... Does that make sense, right? Uh, because I don't think many of you had time to really type out the code as I did it, right? Very hard for you to follow along. I We did try our best to push the stuff up so that you can refer to it, okay? And I hope that the fact that we've rec we're recording this really does help you, okay? But, you know, does this method work? Uh, let us know, All right? Let us know. And of course, please give uh, feedback about the content. Please give feedback about, you know, my delivery, right? Am I constantly complaining about being sleepy because yesterday, uh, the night before yesterday, I stayed up to watch the Apple event. I'm very sorry. So I, I was very sleepy. Uh, today, I'm, am, I, am I, have I complained too much? Are we hungry? All right, uh, let me know. Okay, I, I hope. Uh, give us your feedback. I am uh, looking forward to it. Okay. All right. So I have one last uh, quiz for you. Give me a couple of minutes to get it ready. And I we will start that and we'll declare one final winner to get a, a mystery prize. Okay. So. Okay, where is my quiz? All right, there it is. Okay, I found my quiz. Let's let's get to it. If you if you need to go, by all means, don't worry. Okay. Okay, there we go. Just eight questions this time round. Let's go. Okay, I'm not sharing sound today, but uh, it's okay. Right, so you can just imagine the like Kahoot music in your head. Okay, here it is. It's my other screen. Right, let's do this. All right, final Kahoot, everybody.
All right, please join in the next minute. Then after that, I'm going to get lunch. Sorry, I just keep complaining about being hungry. I would like to thank everyone who's been, uh, you know, like participating along, like, you know, this morning, uh, who, the, oh, uh, like the last few days, every now and then I made a mistake, right? There'll be people who have been helping me answer questions, like uh, helping figure out why I made mistakes in my React Native code, right? Just now even, right? Also, uh, I was like kind of stuck on the chat GPT thing. I got a couple of suggestions uh, from folks about what to try, what to do. Okay. Thanks so much. I really do appreciate it, right? Because otherwise it'll be me talking for 18 hours straight and that's a... Uh, Wow, that's very tiring, okay? Uh, more tiring than it already is, okay? And uh, like uh, th this morning, I think it was uh, Shen Kai, was it? Like, who actually you know, um, gave some gave some good points on the workshop chat so that I could take that and run. So I do really appreciate uh, those of you who have been participating. And even if you haven't, not to worry. I'm just glad you're here. I'm glad you're here after 18 hours, right? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I am semi-delusional at this point. Okay, let's start in 10 seconds. No, 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 not you. Okay, sorry. Hey, that looks like an Apple. This thing down here looks like a, the Apple headset. Okay, anyway, let's start. Okay, day 3 p.m. quiz. Let's go. It's, oh, it's not day, it's not quiz, it's B2022. I didn't update, the, didn't update the, the title. Okay, why do companies make APIs? Why do companies make APIs? Mm -hmm. To let developers access data they wouldn't otherwise have, to make money, to let developers create competing apps to make life more complicated for hackathon, hackathon participants? Okay, congratulations, All right? Uh, I guess number, I guess this yellow thing, it does happen, but I don't think that's why they make APIs, I guess. Okay, so that's uh, that's how I would uh, justify that not being an answer. Okay, well done to Ming Yu. You need to include weather data in your hackathon app. Which is the best option? Just anyhow guess, no one can predict. Look for free weather API. Remove that feature because you don't know APIs. Script data from weather.com page. Set the weather yourself if you've got like powers. Okay, uh, yeah, look for a free weather API, please. Okay. I guess you could scrape data, I suppose, but that's a lot of work, right? That's that's a lot of work. All right, well then to Melody, who's taken the lead. When you have this in your API request string, you are likely making a what sort of request? Okay, this is the arrive la API that we saw just now. What sort of request is this? I, I mentioned this. Okay, it's a get request. Okay, so it's a get or post, right? And there are a few others, right? But this is a get request. It shows up in the URL. That's how you tell. Okay. All right, Melody is still on top. Let's keep going. If this JSON response came in in a variable called data, how would you access the marked value 15? How would you get to the value 15? Is it data.services.no, services square bracket 0.no, data.services square bracket 0.no, or is it no? Okay, the answer is data.services.square bracket zero dot no. Okay, because this is an array, right? First of all, you need to go, this whole thing is data. So data.services, then this is an array, right? Inside this array, the first I bracket zero, and you need to go to dot no. Okay, so a bit tricky, but you'll get used to it, right? All right, well done, Melody. And Tristan is catching up. Multi-select here. What are some options for you for this hackathon if you're planning a back-end app? Okay. Right. Is it to find relevant public APIs, write your own backend from scratch, make use of free platforms, uh, pretend you have a backend? I guess, okay, nah, ignore the fact that AWS technically isn't free, right? It's free for you, right? Okay, all of the above, right? All of the above uh, are valid reasons, valid things you can do, okay? You can just pretend you have a backend. It's okay, right? It's okay. If you have no time to do it, just pretend you have one. You can put a JSON file somewhere on the web and then just pretend, right? Who will know when you demo it, okay? Uh, in fact, why do you even need a JSON file, right, in that case? Okay, so, all right, well done. 
What are the topics covered in the miscellaneous deck of slides? I don't think I actually mentioned it in this lecture. Sorry. If you were in the previous previous session, you might know, right? It's is it Redux animation publishing or secret formula for winning a hackathon? Now that I said this, someone might go open it up. Okay, the answer is our answers are Redux animations and publishing. There's no secret formula for winning a hackathon. Sorry. Okay. Oh no, all right, Edmund's on top, well done. Okay, let's keep going. What is the format for an API key in a quest header? Is it authorization bearer API key, authorization bearer API key, authorization bearer API key, or authorization bearer attack API key? Okay, the answer is yellow because you have to spell like an American. Okay, sorry. Sorry to those who uh, got tricked by the first answer. Okay. All right. All right. Well done to I don't know. When is the launch event? Very simple question. All right. When is the launch event? Okay, it's this Friday morning at 10 a.m. That's very important. You should tune in if you can, and uh, at least someone from your team should tune in. Okay, with that, we have come to the end of the today's session. We've come to the end of the entire pre-hackathon workshop. All right, congratulations to our winner, who is... Edmund, well done. Okay, so great. Uh, please expect a ping on... Uh, Please expect the ping on uh, Discord and uh, just to see your see who you are, so that I can figure out what group you are, so that we at DSTA and I DSTA and we can send you a prize. Okay, congratulations, everyone! You made it to the end of this entire thing. Thank you so much for joining me um, for this entire week of learning and stuff. If you have any feedback, you want to DM me, also can right. I, let me go and check whether I turn on my DMs. All right, I think I turn on my DMs for Discord. Okay, but feel free to DM me. If you have any questions, please go ahead and ask in the respective channels, admin questions or coding questions. Okay, uh, workshop channel. I guess you have any workshop related questions you can ask there, right? That's fine too. Okay, thank you everyone. All the very best for the hackathon. All right, and uh, I, I don't think you'll see me on Friday, but uh, Friday will be DSTA running the show, but I'll be around Discord. Let me know if you have any questions. Do take care. All the best. See ya. Bye. Okay, uh, Edmund, I've taken note of your request. So Melody, you are the winner. <laughs> okay. Uh, also because I don't know has won yesterday as well. So Edmund has uh, turned down the price. I don't know if you're still here, but you know. All right. So anyway, Edwin has turned down the price. Uh, and uh, I don't know has won yesterday. So Melody, you are the winner for today. Okay. All right. Thanks everyone. Take care. Let me find my where's my where's my where's my thing? Where's my stop share arg?